uh, Tanika, you've raided the Zamagedi uh, from their south uh, over the last weeks with no losses uh, so far, but no great gain either. In the slushy meadow beyond you either Zamagedi men, there are five of them, an adolescent and a woman rarely seen to emerge from one of the three yurts beyond. A dozen mares graze and foster 13 folds in the meadow around the small camp, hidden by the edges that gird it. Five more horses belong to those men, tethered and hobbled by their yurts. Beside you, laid flat in the darkness, overlooking the camp, your siblings. It is the hour of the wolf. One of the men uh, on watch snores. The other moves every so often, shifting his weight and trying to remain prescient uh, until the dawn arrives. The rest hidden from sight in their yurts snore beyond. Somewhere far off, uh, one animal calls unanswered. Is it just the siblings that are with me? It is. The other seven or so of your followers remain at camp in the Marmot Hollows. You left them behind three days ago. I'll creep up close to uh, where they are. See the room. There's takings to be had here. Thirteen falls. Easy enough to get away without anyone being harmed. You see a flash of um, Cadden's teeth smiling in the darkness, but that's all. But you think you think that grimace is a smile. Uh, Chillin would just nod and like crack his neck uh, and wait. And you can tiptoe across to the the field, join. Perhaps you could be a distraction. The other one snores. Um, my eyes have improved in the darkness, so I am less likely to make a noise. But still. I might not notice a stone and sense something scuffing. If you cover the guard with your with your bows, I will sneak in as close as I can get and try to try. We can try to take him out. Is that your plan, brother? I think it's the same plan. So once I see them sort of unshouldering their bows, I um, I start just um, I drop to the floor and just crawl, um, hugging the ground to get as to get to as to get to the sort of limits of the um, firelight or as close as I can um, to the sentry while staying away from the horses so my smell doesn't alert them and get as close as I can. Stealth check, uh, please. Uh, I get a 19. You stalk uh, through the darkness, unnoticed it seems, uh, as you watch uh, the quarry beyond. The fire is low enough uh, that he's not blind uh, from it, but looking uh, about, uh, like his vision cuts a swathe across you, uh, unnoticed, across to one of the mares uh, who's ri risen up and walking around somewhere off in the dark, uh, and then back, blowing into his hands, rubbing them together. He scoffs over at the man, uh, snoring, uh, doesn't. Peter be interested in reprimanding the man. 
again, I'll I'll count the um, I'll double make sure that we haven't missed any men or that from my point of view, there's nobody sort of there's no, we're not going to fall into any surprises here. Um, that it is, I'm closer now. Can I can I detect anybody else or have we have we assessed the situation correctly? You've been watching them uh, since yesterday afternoon, uh, but from not as close a distance as the one current. Uh, you can see that there's the one awake, uh, the sentry awake, uh, the other sleeping, and you know to expect uh, three other men in amongst the three girls, uh, the yurts uh, that form the centre of the camp, uh, as well as a younger boy uh, and the woman. There's no dogs, uh, anything, uh, no other animals other than the foals and a dozen mares uh, and five geldings. Okay. Um, wanting to be as close as I possibly can to um, to both hit both the guard and his sleeping companion, so I can sort of cut the slit the throat. I'm going to try and. Um, I'm going to wait until he's he's got his he turns away from me or something like that, and then I'll just stand up and try and um, and try and get up to him and slit his throat. But I'm assuming that if he hears anything or reacts, he'll turn around and the arrows of my uh, siblings will take him. Am I within one round of getting to him? I mean, that's what I'm assuming. I hadn't imagined that you had gotten that close to him. Okay. Uh, I think okay. another spell check if you want to get up to within 30 feet of him. Uh, any closer than that, and you wouldn't have the components needed for the to, to remain hidden. Okay. Uh, but another stealth check to get up to within 30 feet. Uh, at the moment, I guess, you three beyond uh, uh, laid flat on the ridge uh, behind. Can just see no sign of Kadan as he disappears into the dark, presumably still heading towards the camp. How'd you go with that roll, Kaius? Uh, I'm not. I'm, I haven't made up my mind whether I want to close the distance more or not. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Then I'll 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 cover him with my bow as I come in closer. Um. And and try yeah. I get a 20 on my stealth. So I get to... I get to he close. The falls and just assumes it's the mare clotting uh, somewhere off in the dark. Doesn't even turn mm -hmm. his attention around. In that case, I... Um, I draw my draw my dagger and start um, running in close or sort of tiptoeing in close, closing the distance to try and slit his throat and, and kill him before he has time to react. Shall I make an attack? Certainly. Uh, you'll have advantage. Uh, and you guys beyond now would see your youngest uh, brother slip from the darkness oh, with the gloom of the <laughs> And the man jerks, hearing him at the last instant, and turns. Yeah. yeah, he just, some instinct throws him aside and I miss him. The other, I'm guessing the other arrows fly, though. I'm, I'm less, guessing they had the readied actions. Yeah, this will trigger the readied actions of any of you guys who would have drawn bows and uh, readied arrows uh, on the uh, conscious figure beyond. You'll have advantage because you're hidden, but disadvantage because you're firing uh, this man into near darkness, uh, but are within range. So uh, it'd just be a flat roll. I get a 17. Yeah, I got 15. 19. 19, was that Taylor? Yes. So three arrows fly. <laughs> the second two... Uh, I'll strike in uh, to the man, one in the chest, uh, one in his side. Oh! Uh, a grimace of pain. Uh, what's the damage? Ten, Max. Nice. I assume I have a short bow, not a long bow right here. Uh, it's up to you guys based on your loot. Uh, 
what you have. I think there is a longbow in the loot, but I'm not sure how many. There was one longbow in the loot. You already have one, don't you, um, um, Tanaka? Tanaka has, yeah. Uh, I just yeah. assumed that I picked up a bow yep. somewhere uh, from like the many slain like, bowmen yep. that we've or whatever. Like, nothing special. I used a bow slightly more than you, so I was... Um, yeah, you I should was... definitely have the, the, the better bow. Uh, I only yeah. have it for like situations like this. You know, I yeah. never really use it. Mine was four damage. Okay. Fourteen. He's got a heavy furs about him, even though it's spring, it's still cold through the night. Uh, and they've saved his life in this instance. He still lives cry crying out, half choking in pain. Uh, the snore on the floor rolls about back and forth and then sits upright, rubbing at his eyes, still night blind uh, to the violence uh, before him. But as you guys roll initiative, uh, he calls out for his companion sleeping beyond. Shit. Katan, you're in the thick of it. Your dice cannot fail you. <laughs> um, that, is a, that is a bad place to be. Uh, did we bring any horses with us? Or are they left uh, far enough away? Oh, okay, never mind. You've answered. Yeah. If you wish you could uh, <laughs> uh, a full round, you could get back to your horse tethered, but I imagine you wouldn't bring them within scent distance of the mares uh, in case they like call out and, and give you away. Yeah. I'm just trying to decide how many rounds of movement I am from where like Kadan is. Uh, he moved up 120 feet from where you guys were camped uh, up on the ridge, uh, observing the uh, the camp by night. Okay. So yeah, 60 feet behind you are your horses, and uh, he moved up 120, so uh, 150 feet from you guys are the actual ring of Gurs, the triangle of Gurs, the yurts. Uh, Sane, you're the first to act uh, after you've just like, whoo, whoo, let this arrow fly off into the darkness and had a satisfying, oh, part satisfying, part worrying cry of agony beyond. So Sane will stand up from the ridge uh, and move forward, drawing another arrow and let fly non-natural 20 to hit uh, and six damage. Sorry, seven damage uh, on the man who's already injured. He's bloodied now uh, as your arrow finds its mark uh, in his shoulder. Uh, it whistles, uh, whistles past you, uh, cut on, striking the man, but he doesn't fall limp uh, as you grapple with him. Uh, he unarmed and you uh, blade in one hand, bow on the other. Is there anything else you want to do for your turn, Sano? No. And you said you were running forward towards the fray, right? Yeah, she'll move up uh, full movement. Okay. Uh, the sleeper on the ground like sits upright. Olu, Olu, wake up, you fools! <laughs> uh, and he'll like, throw aside his uh, stinking uh, furs, uh, brandish uh, a hatchet in both hands, uh, and rush towards you, uh, cut on, and try and hack down into uh, uh, your arm that holds uh, the weapon against his companion. For a 18 to hit, all up. Yep, yep that hits. Uh, hatchet two hands. Six slashing damage. It cuts through the fur of your deal, uh, gnawing across the bone. 
uh, and blood begins to soak in the sleeve. Ah. Uh, he just keeps calling out, swearing, and like saying alarm, and like kind of in that like befuddled, wake up from sleep uh, into a maelstrom uh, jauntedness. Uh, but his strike finds its place amongst the madness. And uh, Chulun, you hear the scream and uh, know the jig is up, and it's your turn to act. Uh, to act. Uh, yeah, he'll just move with like ridiculous speed. Um, I spend a key point to dash as a bonus action, and then that'll take me eighty feet closer. Uh, and then I'll use a move, so that will bring me one hundred and twenty feet, which I think is there. Is it? Oh, Sentinel, yep. Who's yeah. who's contesting with uh, cut on? Cool. So I'll do that. Uh, like he'll just like be leaping, like from rock to rock, uh, like moving <laughs> insanely fast uh, until he like. Uh, kind of skids to a halt in front of this man, and he's going to just like grab the front of his fur and headbutt him. Um, uh, you'll have advantage uh, flanking with your younger brother, but will also be adjacent to the sleeper. Okay, no worries. Uh, is that sleeper asleep? No, no, sorry. He's foolishly named by uh, yours truly. He's okay. well and truly awake now, and he had just hacked at Kadan with an axe. Okay, no, no worries. Uh, it's a crit. Uh, for the headbutt, and then I uh, get to make an unarmored attack as a hang on there. As a monk, I think I always get to make two attacks, but I don't know if it takes my bonus action because I've used that already. Uh, just let me check one second. Yeah, so it's just a one attack. Um, uh, yeah, I'll smash my forehead into his nose. Uh, and it will deal uh, seven and four, so eleven uh, bludgeoning. Okay, eleven. Uh, yeah, you just headbutt him twice. The first breaks uh, his nose. Uh, the second knocks him unconscious, and he just crumples. Uh, badly wounded and shot thrice with arrows uh, to the ground, uh, narrowly avoiding. Uh, kicking up cinders as he falls uh, by the fireside. Cool. Uh, then I'll just like look around and put my back to Kadan uh, and try and keep him safe from this side. Kadan, it's your turn to act. Kadan will circle round. Well, no, if we're flanking this, um, we're flanking the axe man, is that right? Or... Can I yeah, get the another? sleeper is the man holding the axe. Uh, you both are adjacent to him, so if you wish to get yourselves either side of him, you can do so with uh, partial movement. Okay, yep, I'd like to do that. And then can I flank attack him with my dagger? Certainly. Um, so that's 17? It certainly hits. Cut through all and deal uh, and up into flesh. Um, Gives a high first. Boost. 13 points of damage. Uh, that's uh, it for the sleeper. You drive the blade up in underneath his ribs and puncture something vital because his scream is quickly swallowed up uh, by frothy blood. He drops to his knees, twitching. And then for the rest of my move, I'll, I'll try and, if I can run out of the light of the campfire I'll, I'll retreat back into the darkness hmm, that'll be 15 feet from here which will put you 45 from the girl so yeah I'll say you're in the darkness okay uh, maybe those conscious now might know that there's more than what they can see out there but as far as um, being able to target you goes you'll be in the dark considered uh, in the darkness from them hidden uh, the foaler uh, will like crawl out on his hands and knees uh, from one of the years, uh, get up to his knees, holding his uh, short spear in two hands, brandishing at the the phantoms in the dark before his eyes uh, fall on you. Uh, Chulun uh, and his companion's uh, corpse is like steaming up around you. He just gives ah! and runs forward, uh, trying to thrust out and impale you uh, with the staff. There's a 17 on the die, so it'll be a certain hit. Yep. Uh, five piercing damage as it punctures through like the studded leather uh, into your side. <coughs> uh, he rips it back and thrusts again uh, on his next opportunity. Uh, after Fowler, Earl of, uh, oh, rushes out of his uh, tent, nude in the moonlight, bellowing. He's got a curved saber and he brandishes it in one hand, uh, 
fumbling at like the tent flaps uh, with the other as he bursts out uh, cold into the uh, sorry into the frigid cold. He can see you dimly illuminated uh, by the smouldering watch fire, Chulun, uh, and will rush forward, uh, getting behind you and trying to decapitate you. Two-handed shoulder strike. So it'll be a sixteen to hit. And uh, that just hits. And a 19 to hit. Yep. And then brings up a rising knee uh, into, the, into your back uh, for a 16 to hit again, which is a hit. Uh, so it'll be four, then seven slashing. So 11 slashing all up and two bludgeoning. Okay. Um, yeah, Chinon is just trying to stand there uh, and like get them all to look at him. Um, he's not like uh, he doesn't look well. He's been slashed now uh, like a few times and stabbed. Um, yeah. So he's like trying to uh, keep it together, but like he's pretty heavily surrounded. Yeah. Perhaps I shouldn't have left you. <laughs> <laughs> the watcher chokes uh, on his own blood and dies. Yeek. Uh, or Yeke, uh, son of Olu, rushes out uh, of the third Gur. Uh, looking about, uh, he'll pull uh, a keen but simple knife uh, from his belt, see the uh, the murderer surrounded by the men beyond, uh, and rush out uh, to assist his father. Uh, he won't be able to flank you, so he'll just strike out once with the dagger, uh, trying to gut you as he's been taught. <coughs> uh, that will be an 18 all up. Uh, so it'll be four piercing damage uh, from Yeke. Just these like jackals descending on you, like rising and falling of uh, spears and blades. Uh, Tanaka, you see this uh, after you've let fly with uh, one of the feathered shafts. What do you do now? Yeah, he readily notches another arrow uh, and takes aim um, at Urlu, uh, seeing him crazed and naked. Uh, he will let fly with another arrow for a 18. That uh, hits. And the uh, damage all up is 15 with the bonus uh, action to Hunter's Mark. Uh, it takes him uh, just above the bone of his shoulder and then flies out the other side, leaving a nasty uh, gash uh, to grizzle blood uh, down his arm, uh, winging him only uh, enough to cause him concern uh, and to make him realise that there are others, other foes and what he can see beyond. Yeah. Uh, once... I see that arrow uh, straight through. I'm going to throw my bow down, uh, pull my saber, and rush forward. Okay. That will put you next to Sarnai. And it uh, goes back to the top. Sarnai, you're the next to act. Uh, Sarnai uh, hears Tanaka's feet behind her, and she speeds up even further. Uh, she's going to double move. And so that puts me within 30 of them. 30, yep. Uh, and she'll pull out uh, her... <coughs> it's, it's a glorified knife, but it's a, a, a short sword, basically. Uh, and she'll let out the wolf howl. Uh, and yeah, I think that's all I can do. Okay. Uh, the hunter of the axe, uh, sorry, short spear, uh, will thrust it again uh, at you, Chalun, with advantage, but it's a miss. You step wide and whoosh, uh, just rips at the deal this, uh, that sprouts out beside your armor. Uh, he only gets the one attack. Sleeper is slain. Chulun, you're the next to act. Okay. Oh. Yeah, he'll howl as well. Uh, and he'll like twist that uh, ring um, around his finger. Um, and I guess his skin will turn to stone. Um, so that'll be my action to activate that. And then uh, I'll spend the key point to use my bonus action to dodge. Uh, so he'll just like, uh, I guess, I don't know how you activate it, but he would just like twirl it maybe, or like there's a word he has to say, something. Um, but when it does, uh, he'll just like drop into a defensive stance and uh, hold out as best he can. Nice. Cut on. Uh, you smell the stink of magic uh, in your nose, uh, mingling with the blood to see the violence being played upon your brother before you. What do you do? Um, he's, he um, 
spits to ward off the the cham, the spirits of the of the wastes, but um, runs forward to grab the child. Um, as he does so, he sprinkle with his fast hands. He spring he um, between him and the child, um, between the child and the father, he scatters some of his um, sharpened vertebrae, which he uses as caltrops, and then um, tries to grab the child and pull him back into the darkness with him. Oh, nice. Uh, make a pose gravel. Uh, your DC is 14 athletics. Um, yes, I get uh, 27. So you're 15 foot back, uh, so you can dash up for that uh, and then move back five feet away from the fray. You're still in dim light, uh, but obscured. Uh, well, oh, yeah, because, uh, yeah, so I can only, yeah. Dragon. Yeah, yeah, if it was an ally, it'd be full movement, but because he's a foe, he's resisting. Yeah. Uh, so you drag him five well, feet away from the fray, so he's not adjacent. I've got, I've got plus 10 move, but still, I'd, I'd only yeah. move him a little bit further. Yeah, 10 foot from the fray, uh, nearly yep. in dark dragging the uh, the young Yeek, uh, Yeke, uh, away. All who points with the bloody sabre. No! This is your your doom is coming. I, I'll, um, I'll say. The wolf has scented your blood and you are doomed. That's all I'll do. Fella, uh, F- Fowler uh, moves around and tries to hatch it uh, down into you. Chulun, so he has advantage, but you have dodge, so it's just a straight roll uh, for 14 on the die, so 17 to hit. Yep. Uh, that hit now that you have stone skin? Yeah, stone skin gives me resistance to uh, slashing damage. Okay, my bad. Uh, seven slashing damage. So I'll take four. And then Orlu will provoke an opportunity of attack from you uh, and rush to engage Karan. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely take it. Uh, 17 on the die, so that'll hit for sure. Yep. Uh, it's going to be 8 from a kick. Uh, yeah, you kick him in the guts, uh, nearly winding him, and he like stumbles as he uh, rushes past you, but his focus is such on Yeke uh, that he does not uh, like stay to contend with you. Can I... Uh, um- He'll stumble onto the caltrops, I'm guessing. That oh, was my intention. Yes, thank you for reminding me because I'd certainly forgot about them. And I remember when you were saying it, I was, I was thinking, I'm going to forget about those caltrops. So, uh, he'll make a deck save, is that right? 15, DC 15 dex. <laughs> oh, in the dark, uh, nude, uh, cold and wounded, he like steps in several uh, spinal caltrops and like gives out a pig cry to the uh, north sky. He takes one point of piercing and can't move um, must stop moving for the rest of his turn, and he's got minus ten on his move until he. Uh, as he was rushing towards you. Does that mean he falls prone as well with the caltrops? Um, it doesn't say anything on the on the. Um, okay. Description. Yeah, so he just cries out in pain and like near falls over, clutching at his uh, bloodied feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Uh, somewhere, but uh, in like that bloody night ground between yourself and your brother. Um, that's a real shame. His movement reduced to zero. Uh, um, so only this, only this round. Um, he's got minus ten in future rounds. But uh, in that case, I'll take an action to use the dodge action and like fending off any like potential uh, melee foes uh, with his saber outstretched uh, with one hand, while the other he clutches at his near ruined foot because uh, that's about all he can do. Uh, after Olu Yeke uh, will struggle against you and try and break free. Uh, cut on. Uh, gets a natural one. So uh, <laughs> five is your DC athletics. I can't fail that, actually. Okay. Um, <laughs> you grab hold of him, uh, despite how he struggles uh, for his movement. Well, he can't do anything and has no bonus since he has no attack. So sucks to be Yeke. Tanaka, <laughs> uh, you can see this playing out uh, before you as you rush uh, towards the fray. Uh, they are 90 feet uh, beyond uh, from you. Sorry, Chulun is 90 feet beyond. Yes, uh, Chulun and Fowler, uh, sorry, Fowler and the hunter who contend with him, uh, and the others uh, in the initiative list are uh, 5 to 15 feet from them. Okay. Um, 
I guess he's just taking the dash action for this turn then. Okay, so that'll put you 30 from them. Uh, back to the top with Sinai. You're 30 feet out uh, from where Chulun stands and meets the uh, moment. Uh, so she'll move up uh, and flanking the, uh, I believe it was the hunter, is uh, still with Chulun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so she'll uh, flank the hunter uh, with Chulun. That'll be uh, 19 to hit. Uh, and then she'll uh, strike Certainly. out doing an, uh, trying to, to cut for the arm, but uh, the flailing of the hunter makes it a glancing blow for damage. Okay. He grimaces and turns to face you, uh, leaving Chulun uh, to be assailed uh, by the follower. Uh, and with a, a second howl, she'll uh, go into a rage as a bonus action. That would sound frightful uh, at this wolfish hour. Uh, after Sinai, the hunter, wounded, uh, turns to briefly put his back to you, uh, Chulun, uh, to strike at your sister. Uh, he has the short spear, so he'll grasp it in two hands and try and gut you with it, Sinai. Uh, 11 on the die, that'll be 16 to hit. <coughs> that'll hit. Uh, uh, nine piercing damage. Uh, Chulun, you're the next to act. One foe facing you, the other uh, behind you has his back to you for now. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to strike out uh, with an attack. Is this uh, against the wounded hunter uh, or against the foller who's trying to hack at you? Uh, the guy who's trying to stab me all the time, the foller. Okay. So that's an 18 on the first. A crit on the second. I'll happily take. Uh, it's going to be th uh, seven for the first punch and uh, ten for the second. Describe uh, how the faller dies. Uh, like, Chilun hasn't fought like this before, and now he realizes that as he, like, his fist connects with this man's face that he's made of stone. And it's just like a brutal, like, crunch and, like, bones smashing um, uh, as he, like, pummels this guy uh, to bits. Uh, he's then going to turn, if he's down, uh, I'm going to spend a key point to do flurry of blows so I can attack two more times this round. That'll be with advantage because he has his back to you facing your sister. <laughs> Chris. And it dies on the floor. There it uh, is, an offering to the polyhedral god. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a, a crit and a 15. Uh, 15 is what you need to hit, uh, Hunter. So they're both hits, of course. God, okay. Uh, it's going to be 12 damage for the uh, for the crit. And Very nearly slain. Uh, six for the second. Okay, that will be 23. <laughs> and can you, my lord, please roll a d20? This will be the in combat table. A4. Sorry, a d10. Uh, but okay. we'll take a four. Uh, concussion. He has disadvantage on all attacks and saves until this combat ends. Yeah. He's very badly bloodied. Uh, I imagine like driving elbow down into the back of his head. It like stuns him uh, and he's just reeling. Smell metal in his nostrils and he's like uh, nearly like it's on the edge, nearly fallen over into unconsciousness. Uh, but he's not slain, uh, the hunter. Okay. Is there anything That's else? It. Hold on. Okay. Uh, our first cut undone. How old is this boy who I've got? Uh, D4 years younger than you. Two years younger than you, you'd gauge uh, by his frame uh, and like uh, inferior strength uh, and build. Damn. Um, hmm. And. Are there any signs to show whether he's an adult or a child? So, I mean, are there sort of, is he a warrior or is he a child who's out with warriors? He had a dagger when he came out to the sound of his father's fray. 
so you'd imagine if he was a warrior, he would have something more than like the dagger that all boys possess. Um, yeah. That used all, all types of stuff. Um, in that case, I'm going to um, just use my... 40 feet of movement. Well, I can only move 20 feet, but the guy's stopped, so I think I can probably get out of um, sight. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, can I do non-lethal damage on him? Can I try and knock him unconscious? Uh, I guess you could. Uh, like, You've got him grappled, so you could choke him out. Um, attempt to that'll be opposed uh, athletics I don't want to kill a child um, I'll drag it I'll carry on dragging him away and um, and I'll, I'll carry on dragging him away heading for the sort of um, once I've got out of once I think I'm out of um, sight of the father, I'll change direction, head another direction, um, fall prone um, with the child and try and sort of just cover his, cover his, um, cover his mouth so he can't move and um, we're both prone hiding in the darkness from the father. Okay. That'll require another athletics check to, uh, to do all of that. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, your DC is 12 athletics. I got a 22, so um, do you want me to make a stealth as well? To hide? Uh, no, you're at, like he can't see you uh, through the darkness okay. uh, and you're well beyond the smouldering uh, firelight. Uh, he couldn't hear, I think, the struggles either over the sound of dying or screaming men and like swordplay. Uh, but yep. of course, you go off in that direction. He knows <laughs> you're somewhere in that vicinity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've just basically my second athletics should, because of my um, grapple mastery, he should now be restrained, um, not just grappled, but restrained and unable to move. Or he can yeah, he's moved to zero. Yeah. Okay. Uh Orlu will negotiate uh, the minefield uh, of skeletal caltrops uh, you laid. Uh, automatically, uh, he'll be like, take another one point of damage. Uh, I'd say stepping through them with like that father's uh, white heat uh, to save his child from the hands of a stranger. He'll fumble out into the, uh, the darkness uh, towards you, calling, Yeke! Yeke! Uh, his sword glinting uh, where it's not bloodied uh, off the moonlight. Uh, and he, like, stumbles about. Um, given the distance, I'm going to say he'll use his action, uh, sorry, his movement to chase after you and his action uh, to try and find you. I'm just going to set a DC 15 uh, perception check uh, for him. Uh, looking out. Uh, he gets a crit, uh, okay. so I'm going to say that Yeke drives his heel down on your shin bone, like kicking down, and it mm -hmm. causes a pain as, from you as you like stifle the cry. Okay, um, just the enough, and he like strides. You can hear him like his heavy footfalls, uh, and yeah, this nude, wounded warrior clutching a bloody saber in both hands comes to reckon with you, child taker. Uh, but that's all he can do for his turn. Yeke is next and will try futilely to resist. He's restrained and prone, so he'll have disadvantage on his opposed athletics. <laughs> Your DC is six. Can you not, not fail that either? Um, no, I can't fail that. Okay. You've got him well and truly. Uh, Tanaka, you're the next to act. Uh, 30 feet beyond, you can see Sanai uh, and Chulun uh, contending with this uh, bloodied uh, hunter. Uh, and a man slip off into the darkness after where you'd seen Karan uh, drag one of the uh, the younger warriors. Uh, no, he's going to continue on um, in his trajectory towards Chulon and Sarnai, where they have this man beset already. Um, he's going to rush in and send a vicious uh, slash at this man's side uh, for a crit. 
He's a one hit point, so I imagine the blade goes uh, cutting through one side and out the other, and a wave of gore spills down out the side of the man. He pig squeals and drops like futilely gathering at his belly eels uh, as you like send him uh, to his death. Yeah, now I've done my gaze to be honest. I've seen this, this man. Uh, walking off in the correct direction. After ten, it goes back to the top. Uh, Sana, you're next to act. Could I reach Orlu this round? He's forty feet uh, from where you stand, and the corpse is about the smouldering fire. So you okay. could reach him this round if you use a movement in action. If your movement's thirty foot. Uh. Mm. She'll move 30 uh, and uh, see if she can call to him and get his attention and uh, hold her action to see if he will take the bait. Uh, to do this, you're going to have to do an intimidation check, uh, which will exceed the arbitrary DC I'll choose of 18 to distract him from trying to rescue his child. <laughs> yes, it's not... Uh, you got okay, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a 15 on the die. Let me see what my intimidation is. Nope, 16 total. Yeah, despite like the threat you pose to him, he's uh, eagle-eyed and like blinker-focused on rescuing Yeke. Uh, and heedless to you, maybe to his own detriment uh, for now. Uh, the hunter is next. Uh, he just sees the ground come up to swallow his face and soul chill on you the next act. Um, <clears throat> there is a guy still in front of me, I think. Uh, no, children just came out of the uh, um, darkness and gutted him. Okay. Um, you mean Tanaka? Okay. Sorry, yeah. Tanaka, my bad. Yeah. So it's Orlu. Okay. Orlu uh, rushes to screaming towards Karan, who holds Yeke just off in the darkness, 40 or so feet from you. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm going to... Yeah. I'll run after uh, Orlu and I'm going to try and like fly and kick him in the side of the head. Um, as he's like searching in the dark, I guess I can do the, the sort of monk ninja run of the yeah. do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> after him. Yep. Uh, 16 on the die, which will certainly hit. Yep. There's no armor to speak of, but his name day male. Um, so it's going to be eight uh, from that kick. And then I will use my last key point for a flurry of blood. <laughs> Hit him two more times. Uh, so the first one will miss. Second one's a 17, uh, which will hit. Another eight damage. And he needs to make a deck save or be knocked prone. No, actually, sorry. I'm going to say that he needs to do the other thing, uh, which is... All the damage uh, from that last one all up, sorry. So I did 16 in total for two attacks. He's bloodied. Uh, I have an ability where I can make him not have reactions, I think. Just one second. Oh, that's pretty handy. Yep, so it just, when I hit with Flurry of Blows, I can choose to have him not be able to take reactions till the end of my next turn. So I'll hit him uh, twice, and then I will, how far away was he from me? 40 feet. 40, okay. Uh, then I will, yeah, uh, I'll just say he can't take reactions. That's not really as good as I was hoping. Uh, cool. Good to go. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's quite bloody. I imagine he like, rushed up out of the darkness, grabbing at the saber, intending to hack down into you, uh, cut on, and your brother flies out of the darkness and kicks into the side of the man. Uh, and fierce melee ensues. After Chulun's turn, uh, it is you, cut on, down on the ground, holding Yeke while he's forced to watch with you. Uh, as your brother fights uh, in mortal combats with his father. Uh, I think we lost Kadan uh, briefly. Oh, of course we did. It's the Dorsonian curse of the throw to. Uh, when he comes back, he can act. Orlu uh, will be next and punish him uh, for his desync. And so, um, what would he do? I think he would just provoke from you, Lloyd, to... Um, 
to go and rescue his son. I think okay. father would. So yep. I'll provoke an opportunity attack from you. He'll rush forward and hack down uh, at Kardan, uh, who's prone. So this will be with advantage. Thrice. From this, a crit. Uh, I was going to say, for, for Kaisa's benefit, he was trying to hide in the dark and he'd changed course. Did, or, did Orlu find him? Yeah, last turn okay. I used uh, action uh, to find the man roll ah, perception. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, yeah, I got a hit uh, for eight damage again. You elbow him in the side of the head. His like face is like bruised and like swelling up badly. One of his eyes swallowed by the beating he's taken, uh, but still with a father's rage, uh, he pulls on. I might as well do that damage. Oh, yeah, the portal is back in a big way. Yep. I have no idea why it's back. Obviously, it knows you're hung over, right? Yeah, that must be it. It wants to cause me as much misery as possible. There's a lot of uh, cut on based stuff in this uh, bloody combat here, so maybe we should just take a break uh, until Caius comes back. Yep, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, apologies. Yeah, uh, two minute break. I'll message Caius and because uh, yeah, don't want to do all this without him. Oh uh, yeah, it's the uh, the one on gambit. One of the many gambits we have to go through every time we play. Yeah. All right, back in a tick.
Uh, yeah, I sent an invite, but uh, no. Can you hear me? Am I in again? Yep, we can hear you. Hey. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. I don't know. Anyway. It's all good. A little bit's happened right. uh, since you dropped. Uh, you've been hacked down at with a saber by Orlu uh, for a crit and 18 slashing damage. I need you to roll a d20. Okay. Um, that's uh, um, 10. Uh, it hits you in the side. Roll 3d4. Three 3d4. Four. Three four. Um, four total. For the next four weeks, before taking an action in combat, you'll need to succeed at a DC 10 con, sale, uh, con save uh, or lose uh, that action and your reactions until, the, uh, until your next turn. Broken ribs. Okay. Um, for the next four weeks, did you say? Yep. A DC 10 to act, con save. Okay. And it's your turn. Um, I call out at him. Um, I call out at Ordu. I can, I can easily kill your child. Um, throw down your weapons if you want your child to live, throw down your weapons and join us. Uh, key roll deception, please. Because I'm assuming you don't actually intend to kill the child from what you'd said earlier. Uh, I get a 20. He believes you uh, and falters uh, in the needful moment. Release my son and I will surrender. I release him because I'm not even sure I'll be able to hold him. So I'll, I'll release him at least. Uh, I'll obviously just, I'll slowly um, sort of spread my arms, obviously showing that I'm releasing him. Go boy, go to the ram's horn. Uh, and at that, he throws down uh, his bloody saber to clatter in the mud. Are we still in initiative? Or uh yeah. Okay. 
because I'm going to definitely like hit these people. I don't want to get them getting away. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, it is unfortunate that it's Yeke's turn now, uh, and he will stand up from prone uh, and run towards his Gur and then use his action to make the remaining distance, sprinting uh, and dives inside the tent. Tanaka, you're the next act. Um, Tanaka can only really run forward, so I guess even with a dash, it would just put him just past Sarnay, I believe. Um, running towards uh, where Chuan is at the moment, where Olu is. That would put you 10 foot from Olu if you moved and dashed. Yep. Okay. Uh, so after Tanaka goes to Sinai. Uh, Sinai will uh, look towards where the the boy has gone and begin backing away and moving towards that tent, um, trying to not draw attention to herself, uh, that this Orlu will not continue his fighting. Okay, uh, in that case, make a stealth check. It's not my strong suit. Nope. Nope, that is six. Yeah, it was passive. Uh, he notices, like, he hears footsteps going towards the girl and, like, squints his eyes, uh, trying to pierce through the uh, uh, the darkness uh, to see uh, who goes after his boy. And just calls out, hurry, Yeke, hurry! Uh, and 30 feet, uh, you're 30 feet from the, the girl, but moving at half speed for stealth will put you at the tent flap. Uh, notice now by... Olu off uh, in the dark, uh, fighting with your brothers, and uh, by tell the your sound, boy to join us yeah. too. Tell your boy to join us too. Then there will be no bloodshed. We can even raid your wife and capture her back for you. He gives like a sneering grunt uh, at this, uh, wincing as the pain of his shoulder becomes apparent. Chalun, you're the next act. Yeah, I'm going to brutally kick this guy uh, in the thigh and then in the head. Like, I don't know why we're uh, making peace with him. He tried to kill us. Uh, he nearly did kill uh, Karan. So as far as Chalun concerns, like, this guy has to die. Uh, and uh, he likely will. It's a 19 on the die for the first and a uh, total of 14 for the second. Yeah, they both hit. Okay, eight for the first and uh, six for the second. So 14 all up. Okay, 14 damage. That's a 15. Yeah, you kick him in the thigh and drops him down to his knees uh, and then knee him in the side of the head. His world spins and he nearly drops into unconsciousness, uh, possibly even death. He's very badly bloodied, nearly slain. Uh, then with an interaction, I'll pick up his saber, um, and then I will move uh, 40 feet towards the tent. How far is it? 30 feet. Okay, so I'll go into the tent then, and I'll point the sword at the boy, um, and I'll tell him to like, get in his knees. Bursting into the tent, you can see he's opened up a hide bag next to two rot like stinking sleeping furs, and has produced a hollowed out ram's horn with like a bronze cast at the mouthpiece. Of it. Cut on, you're the next to act. Prone next to a reeling Orlu. Call your boy back. Um. Blow the horn, Yeke! Blow it! Okay, I'm gonna try and grapple this uh, guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's. This is how I kill. I get in close. Um. I get a 17 constitution so I can act. So, um, but I only get a nine um, athletic yeah, throw. Me... Yep. Uh, oh. <laughs> he gets a nine all up, uh, but because you're the aggressor, you win in the event of a tire. Uh, so, yeah, you. I imagine you're both bloody and muddy, and he's nude and wounded, and you're like <laughs> grabbing with him, and you yeah. lock your leg out of his way. So, yeah, you manage to grapple hold of him. His speed is at zero. 
I imagine you would have stood up to do this, so you're both yeah. standing for mechanical purposes. Uh, so that'll be partial movement and action. Is there anything else you wanted to do? You should have. You should have surrendered. You could have saved your family. Grim, Nothing. he's going to reach up with uh, bloody, muddy hands and put them to the side, either side of your uh, temples and try and drive his thumbs uh, into your eyes. Can I get an athletics check from you? Um, DC 14 plus 4, 18 athletics. I get a 26. You wriggle free and he like overbalances as you scrabble uh, in the mud and his foray, <laughs> his foray is denied him. Uh, after Olu, Yeke uh, is next to act and he'll put the ram horn to his lips. <laughs> Gives a few like horrible like uh, horn blows uh, in his like haste and fear uh, as you burst in on him, Chulun. Uh, and you'll just, yeah, freeze <clears throat> movement state right where he is blasting the horn as, as piteously as he can. Tanaka, you're the next to act. You hear the horrible, uh, dreadful noise emanating from within one of the girls. Uh, off to your, drawing your attention to your right and to your left you can see Cut Undone uh, scrabbling on the ground with a much larger but very badly wounded uh, Ordu, uh, Orlu Yeah so here in the horn uh, obviously the brow's furrow um, he's, he's, he's moved darkens a bit uh, but then he'll stalk towards Orlu who's fighting with Kadan and send a, a slash down his back well, he's distracted by his younger sibling. Uh, 26 to hit. That hits. Uh, nine damage. Nine to Olu. Uh, describe his end. It's just a sick, uh, cracking blow of the, the scimitar as it falls in the back of his neck. Um, more, more of a breaking of the neck than a slashing of the neck. Brutal. I imagine the blade goes in up to the spinal cord, but not all the way to decapitate the head. So it like bends forward at an unholy angle, like spilling out spinal uh, gore upon you, uh, cut on before your uh, dead foe is hauled off the top of you and all loose slides uh, to his death. Ugh. Fool, he says, kicking him. I think uh, Tanaka will kick your kicking leg and then bend over to pick you up by the arm. Come on. <laughs> Spits angrily at the, at the, at the thing. You know, oh, idiot. Sanai, you're the next act. <clears throat> uh, Sanai will uh, come in behind Chaloon and grab the horn from the, the boy. Hmm. If you try and disarm him, it'll be a post athletics break. You'll have disadvantage for being the aggressor. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, your DC is nine athletics. Damn it. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Uh, yeah, he like wriggles uh, away, like scampering up into the the uh, like pelt uh, corner of this girl, uh, such that I don't think he can actually like blow the horn successfully anymore. But still, you don't manage to rip it from his <laughs> grasp. Yeah, he's like a squirrel in here. Uh, and witnessing like uh, his. Uh, his pitiful plight uh, and that this foe is cornered, the ra the rage within you begins to subside. Uh, and Chulon, you're the next act. I'm going to batter this child to death. Uh, I'm just going like, to walk towards him and I'm just going to actually I have a sword in my hand, so I'm going to slash him uh, with that once and I'm going to punch him uh, with my stone fist. Um, so first one is 16 uh, to hit. That hits. Uh, the second is even higher. Uh, so it'll be seven bludgeoning and nine slashing. Uh, the stone punch uh, sends him reeling nearly unconscious and the sword blow finishes him. 
and a bright uh, spatter of blood splashes in the inside uh, of the girl. And, and there's a red horn. He's going to like grab the horn and uh, go outside and just begin shouting at whoever is around to like get the things that are valuable. We need to leave immediately. And he will like set to picking like he'll like look through that tent for anything that might be valuable. Go to the warriors, take their weapons, um, and then like set people, uh, Kidan probably to go get the horses or anything else that we can take from here. Um, but like we have literally three minutes to do that before we have to like begin running. So you're going to ransack the tents and the bodies uh, and get cut on uh, to go after the horses. Uh, what are you? What are you other guys uh, doing uh, during this time? Sarnai, after the horses with me. I'll shout because Sarnai's you're good with horses, aren't you? Depends on the day, but that was what she was going to do, anyways. Um, okay, I'm faster, so maybe better if I go. You and Sarnai, and then leave Kadan and Tanaka to the ransacking. That makes sense. Kadan will see anything shiny and pack it up anyway. Yeah, I'm just wary of, of leaving uh, Kidan here to like cause further mischief or like cause more problems. Um, uh, but yeah, that probably makes the most sense because I can move like all, like as fast as a horse, so um, probably makes sense for me to go. So he actually probably would like give a look uh, to Sarnai, like you hesitated, like why did you do that? Uh, and then uh, would we'll, like walk outside and begin just running uh, after the horses. Sarnai follows, but much slower than her older brother. Uh, so between you two, like gathering up this many mares and foals, I think if you weren't like stretched the time of being challenged or given the circumstances, we'd be able to do. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to require an animal handling check. Uh, you guys can do it how you decide, one of you rolling with advantage by the aid of the other or both of you rolling separate checks. But I'm going to need a success uh, from the attempt or attempts. Uh, for you guys to successfully gather all uh, dozen of the mares and their foals. Uh, I'm pretty good at animal handling. I've got plus four. I'll aid you. Okay. Uh, okay, so 16 plus four is 20. Certainly. Uh, it takes the three minutes, but you're able to like, range out and grab uh, all dozen of the mares that Tanika had spied and the 13 <laughs> foals. You can see one of the, uh, the mares uh, has two foals like, that belong to her. And you can like gather them up. Uh, I imagine like each uh, uh, minute uh, is so intense, wondering who and what has heard that horn blow and who may be coming. Uh, but under the pressure, you succeed uh, and gather uh, the small her falling herd that these uh, folk had been gathering. Uh, while, meanwhile, uh, the other siblings ransack uh, the Zamagidi camp, finding a copper cooking pot, a bronze torque, a necklace of tiger's teeth, uh, a large leather bladder filled with kumis, which is like a me fermented mare's milk, a two-handed woodcutter's axe, a longbow, a short bow, 30 arrows. There's the three tents, uh, as well as the weapons that I mentioned uh, of the foeman, and a decent, though rancid-smelling, studded uh, leather cuirass in the largest of the three girts, alongside a terrified... Uh, woman who screams uh, when either, whichever of you uh, moves into the tent uh, intent on pillaging. It's like a feral, fearful screaming and she like moves like a beast to the far end of the girl scurrying away from you. For those that uh, could remember through the battle, this is the tent that Orlu uh, had emerged from. Uh, Tanaka uh, would probably be the one who walks into the tank and sees this, and he'll, uh, he'll put the addition together and sigh. Uh, pop his head back out of the tent and shout in Kadan. Um, what is it? Is that you screaming or is that a woman? Oh, and he'll look in. Oh. Um, do you want her? No. No. 
because the plan was to go in stealthily and quietly. I did. Without harm. To take out the, uh, to take out the sentry. We have we we are we are thirteen uh, thirteen horses richer, and we could have, if the man hadn't been so stubborn, um, we could have had an extra warrior with us too. Don't get me wrong, your your way has its merits. Just prefer to minimise the risk, and that's one. However. <laughs> Uh, I made the noise. It was because of you. That horn got blown. So, and he'll hand over his knife to the younger brother. Oh. So that is your duty. Okay, I'll go in and... Uh, I'll go in and silence her. She has screams of rage at her favourite pitch as you approach and draw a weapon. Please, I am Dalat. I am Dalat. Don't kill me. Um, I'll speak to her a little and check to see if she's got the accent of the Dalats. Calm down, woman. Tell me who um who are you? F which which um what family are f are you from? Urging was my father, though he died during the winter. I was with my uncle's people. You're the curious wolf. I remember you when you came to the Khan's camp. We were raided a fortnight back. The Zamogidi took me, and Orlu stole me as a wife. My brother's a drunkard, and my uncle was slain in the raid. None would stop my theft. Then stop screaming and, and come with us. You've joined a better tribe. She's fearful, uh, paralyzed for a moment, uh, but sees sense uh, and will reach out gingerly uh, when you do not strike her, uh, but assist. Uh, she will rise, clutching at the furs. Um, grab what you can. Take this and this, and I'll I'll load her up like a like a mule, and um, with with the pots and things like that, and uh, get her onto one of the horses when when my brother and sister come back with them. Um, we have another we have another lady what was your name i say I... kotota she sobs we have another we have another lady in the tribe yes yeah, so you two uh sanai and chulun would see this uh figure um in the midst of your brothers as you corral uh, the herd of mares back, mounted on, I assume you are un now unhobbled uh, and previous foes' horses, whistling for your own uh, as they like gallop down towards the camp, coming to your call. Which way, Tanaka? Yes, we're going back to where the oh, I forget the name of it now. The Marmot Hollows. Marmot Hollows. <laughs> Thank you. We'll take our bounty home. So you can assemble the camp and load uh, what you can uh, take uh, onto the pilfered horses. And I imagine quite a swift pace, uh, make your way south uh, out of the Zamagedi falling camp. Um, <clears throat> I might suggest that I take like four or five horses with me uh, and like ride in a different direction. Uh, just because if there's someone going to come and investigate and follow. And if they're still, it's like it's easy to track the amount of horses that we have. So if we take some more of them and turn aside, it might buy us some more time. Here, take the um, take the horn as well and blow it another couple of times to sort of maybe confuse them. 
I will come with you, Chulun. Uh, he'll like look, uh, and then uh, back at the others and say, "All right, quickly." So, is your intent to like ride a different direction and try and draw possible pursuers uh, into like to split them up and have them uselessly pursue this uh, goose chase? Yeah. So, like, if they start to track us from the where the camp was uh, at some stage, like maybe an hour in. Uh, I will take, uh, and so and I will take like a couple of the horses with us, and we'll turn in a different direction so that if they get to that point, they have to make a decision on which way to go. Um, if they're tracking us, you know. And is your intent to loop back around and meet up with your siblings, or to make your own different way back to the Marmot Hollows with your quarter herd? Uh, to loop back, definitely, um, just to throw them off. So it would be like we'd just take a detour, basically, um, to keep them kind of guessing, you know. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, I like it. I was going to have a skill challenge uh, of opposed uh, animal handling checks for you guys to corral the herd and your loop, loop back to the Marmot Hollows before any possible pursuers uh, could catch up with you. Given that plan, uh, I'm going to say that uh, whichever of you will, with the nominated roller for that skill challenge can roll with uh, advantage, given the plan. Uh, though I'll say that uh, if it fails, Zemagidi will be looped back to the main trail uh, and be able to follow easily enough, I think, the tracks of 20-plus horses uh, print south. Okay. Um, will I roll again, Taylor? Is I got the plus four? Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, 16 total. Nice. Uh, maybe from the previous days that you'd been spying on this camp, you noticed a stream uh, ways back, one of the Thor streams that have um, sprung up since winter's end, uh, and you lead the uh, the herd down river of or downstream of that a while before coming back out again, essentially like covering the tracks or like disappearing them uh, and consterning even the most uh, efficient <laughs> ones who might be uh, trailing you. And it's two and a half days uh, later, uh, gear laden down on the pilfered horses uh, and uh, great new wealth uh, to pour in uh, to the camp uh, that you arrive on uh, the outskirts of where your own goes, uh, line, uh, the place you've picked amidst the marmot hollows. At the northern and western approach, there's the fields that give the place, the prairie place, its name, the many marmot holes and hollows uh, that can break the legs of unsuspecting horses, uh, riders' horses uh, unwarily approaching this area and far uh, to its uh, east and rear, a ridge uh, that's spilling a thaw melt, like waterfall down, uh, which uh, nourishes uh, the camp, or has done last uh, near month. Folk uh, seem to have settled in uh, well, uh, and the place uh, is a flurry of, of activity uh, as you arrive back. You've only been gone a week, uh, or just over a week, uh, but there are two uh, strangers' horses tethered uh, nearby uh, to the guest tent, which stands erect uh, next to your own uh, Tanaka. And you can see Geril uh, hacking uh, at brambles uh, to make like a new corral uh, for some of the goats uh, and far off uh, chopping at wood. Uh, there is Dash and he shambles his great uh, like hulking mass uh, over towards you guys, waving with a dumb smile upon his face um, fervently, uh, and others like look up uh, and move over, uh, smiling at the promise of so much uh, food and wealth. Ibukar comes up uh, tisking uh, and bows down uh, low and prostrate before you uh, for a moment, Tanaka, before rising, uh, and then a concerned look comes on her face. You are wounded, Khan. I can see to it if you wish, but I must tell you, there are guests that wait for you. And she like points to the two strangers' horses and the guest uh, girl that sits uh, aside your own. And who is it that waits for us? Aslan, he is called, and his son with him, so he speaks. And from where did they come? From the west, Khan, she says, pointing uh, across the marmot prairies towards where the gold, uh, the gold way snakes its way through the middle of the hordelands. Uh, 
He was just there. Uh, know that that um, probably turned around to get this possession leading caravan moved away, and then dust himself off and make towards the, the guest tent. Garen will whistle and Dash will come uh, up alongside him and effortlessly haul down uh, like masses uh, uh, of like the wealth you guys have pillaged uh, and to like take it gleefully at his task uh, towards like a storage tent or like lean to uh, and return after that heavy work is done uh, to carefully um, and with like a gentle hand take the horses to be like corralled temporarily uh, while new pens uh, are erected. Torkogana uh, will come out uh, and smile uh, at the uh, meek, uh, mute woman uh, that rides uh, next to you, Sarno. Uh, and knowingly will like take the woman uh, under her wing, assisting her down from the horse uh, and towards where the stew pot sits over coals uh, to put something uh, in the girl's belly. Ogul will come uh, and grab at your horse, Chula, and steady it uh, while you dismount and then go to take it off, uh, like to, to be washed down uh, and seen to. And you can see that even since you've been gone, a new bramble kind of ring has been risen up uh, around your brother's gur, uh, safely enclosing it uh, and your own and a few uh, others. Uh, there's fresh marmot skinned uh, that are like hanging up uh, on a rack over like some smoke, uh, and their skins uh, have been sewn together by a nearby tree stump by Tarko Gunnar or one of the other skilled workers. The place smells homely, almost. Like, it doesn't smell like the Nikon Plains, but there's food uh, and some, like, comfort here, and spring makes uh, the place uh, look bountiful and ideal uh, at best. Yeah, I think he'd approve. Uh, he's badly wounded, and, like, when he gets off the horse, I think that would, like, become clear. He's, like, limping. Uh, he's been stabbed and slashed uh, pretty badly. Um and so he might have even been like slumping in the saddle, I guess, uh, as they were riding, uh, Sarnai and he. Uh, but he would like now feel a little bit more safe, but then like was about to kind of like exhale, but realizing now that there are two guests here and he has to go and stand uh, and look big and menacing behind Tanaka. Uh, and so there won't be rest for him yet. So he'll go and uh, follow his brother. Yes, Karan also falls in behind Tanaka. And, and Sarna as well, um, although she tuts a little uh, at the state of Shaloon in spite of her best efforts over the past few days. Polishing, pol just sort of spitting and polishing on the, um, on the silver, um, on the silver necklace he has and that he's added to it the um, tiger necklace. Um, somebody else can claim it, but he's, he's very proud of all his jewellery. So you guys can enter into Tanaka's uh, Gur, the largest, and sit down on the floor uh, where like, uh, the finest furs that your carnate uh, has uh, have been placed. And after a moment, uh, Orgul uh, will come in uh, with bowls of uh, stew from the pot uh, and uh, knowingly has taken the bladder of kumis that you guys ransacked from the Zamagiri falling camp and will place it down with a few freshly carved wooden beakers uh, beside it and then bows before you, Tanaka, and says... Shall I grab your guests, Khan? Allow us some time to uh, to eat, and then do so. And I'll look over at Jolly, who's probably probably feeling ravenous as well as tired and beaten. Yeah, and he's also salty, and you can like tell like he hasn't been very chatty with you, Sarnai. Um, uh, like he's annoyed about how that encounter went, and it's obvious. Uh, and I think that he would like. Um, Probably would have like uh, when he saw Kadan again, given him like a look. I guess they haven't talked about it yet, but I think Kadan would know that there is like a, a looming sort of like Big Brother talk coming um, about that. Kadan's been um, Kadan's obviously known this is coming, but is strutting around as though he doesn't care. <laughs> So 
So uh, Orgu will say, yes, my Khan, uh, and then rise from her bow uh, and walk backwards towards the tent flap uh, and then bow again uh, and exit, uh, leaving you guys to the goat uh, Ung... Uh, leaving you guys to the goat uh, and marmot stew. And there's some like spring onions uh, in there as well, which give it a nice bold uh, flavor. Uh, and it's better than the tack you've survived on uh, for the last eight days. And uh, to wash it down, the warm mare's milk uh, is heady. And uh, if you were to take it in your condition, Karan uh, or Chulun would probably make your head spin a little, but not so much that you don't have uh, most of your wits about you. Uh, yeah, like Chilin will eat uh, uh, as much as he can, uh, which is his usual approach. Um, but he'll just be like quiet and like looking. I guess he has the bowl up to his mouth and like slurping food into his mouth. Uh, he occasionally will just like uh, give a a look uh, to one of the other siblings, maybe, um, and then eventually to snack out with like a what was that <laughs> sort of uh, sort of look. Mm. And you'll probably get the one in return. It's like, I know, I know. Uh, but he'll keep quiet about it. Uh, but once... Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that Tulon will say, um, it's good that we keep them waiting, even that we're here. It's what a can would do. Cadden nods. I was just thinking what a hungry man would do. But yes, I think you're right. Ah. And helps himself to some more arak or kumis. Cuts your breath, causing your uh, ribs to ache when your breath uh, is like stifled. <laughs> but the feeling is good and and the manly. And it seems that you and Chulon were hurt worst. I was badly hurt because I had to run all the way across and stand there and fight five men when Kadan vanished with little boy. I lived, he'll say, and he'll like look down, like this particularly like gnarly scar on his uh, shoulder. Uh, it's like angry and red. But I wouldn't always in that situation. And then he'll like slurp some more soup. We're wolves and wolves kill. And when a battle starts and the fighting starts, there's no room for sentiment. There's only room uh, for survival and intelligence. We need to. We need more than just instinct. We need to build a build a clan. And it was. It's not my fault that these um, Zamogidi care nothing for their children. And uh, if it, if it was a if he had true father instincts, he would have surrendered to us and not risked his. Um, son is dangerous um, in such a dangerous way. He did surrender when you asked. Uh, but he, he risked his son. Soon we'll like look around at them like they're not understanding what he's saying. When we start to fight and there are weapons drawn, then we have to kill. No, I think not. Your ribs are broken. I nearly died. 
because of your decision to leave me there fighting those men and to pull away with the child. I drew off the father and the child. He is one man. There are many. And if it uh, was not me, but maybe Tanaka, maybe he would be dead. You should not have left him, Kadan. Not at least until one of us was closer. The lone wolf does not survive. Mm. That is true. Uh, I respectfully request permission to cross your threshold, Khan. Uh, says an unfamiliar, older, husky voice from outside, intoning the ritual words. Uh, he'll give a, a look over to Jolun, first of all, and then a ceasing look to Kadan, and then uh, he'll reply whatever form and fashion is appropriate. <laughs> Yago would give like a gravelly and... Uh... In that case, he'll give a gravelly. And, uh, <laughs> an older man uh, with like a bristling uh, fur cap, a fine leather apron uh, that ends at the groin uh, and high uh, boots of doe skin, steps in, removes his hat, revealing a bald head, but for a single strip down the middle, which is pleated and then folded back up uh, upon itself. His hands are large, uh, well calloused, and there's like... Uh, the uh, not the glint, but like a uh, marks of like grime, uh, grime uh, in the seared uh, lines of his hands, showing that they're artisan or labour of, uh, of sorts. Uh, there's an hint of intelligence uh, in his old eyes as he rises up from the bow uh, to look uh, amidst the children of Yagai, and for his eyes settle on you, uh, Tanaka. Khan, I am Aslan, a smith from the west, and he'll go down. He's in bell. I have come with my son Osel to great peril to find you and yours. I was tasked in the autumn by Yagai of the Nikon to craft a sword for his son Altai. When I came at winter's end, I found that your great father had passed from this world and his son, who would be bearer of this blade, gone with him. I am sorry for your loss, Khan, and he like goes down to his knees again and puts his forehead uh, to your furs. I appreciate your words of condolence and commend you on coming all this way. Uh, he, he probably is in a bit of shock at this news. The road was hard and dangerous. And agents of Cockchew pursued us. We left my two nephews by the roadside, Khan. But I am honoured to say that I have fulfilled my word to your father, who is a good man despite his hardness. Without the blade weights, he points behind him uh, to the tent flaps. With your permission, Khan. Of course. Come, son. Uh, and uh, Osun, uh, his son, he has a likeness of the man, though much slimmer uh, and taller than his father. Uh, steps in behind him uh, with furs clasped around uh, something that hangs a uh, between his forearms and he carries it reverentially over towards his father uh, and places it down before him uh, and then bows uh, you closest to Tanaka can hear my Khan or great Khan uh, and then Aslan uh, will grab the furs uh, and unwrap them to reveal a scabbarded sword this fine uh, caramelly brown wood clasped in like bronze uh, brackets linked with like a leather uh, thong and at the top of it uh, sprouts an iron-hilted blade, a uh, robust handle, and a carving of a wolf's head uh, at the pommel uh, of it. To your eye, uh, it looks uh, untested, 
unblooded uh, and too clean compared to anything uh, that I guess you guys would have uh, possessed. Uh, and he will like grab it up in his old uh, squat hands and offer it up to you from his prostate uh, prostrate position. Um, Cadden leans forward and um, leans forward a little bit and looks closely at the um, at the hilt. He has heard occasionally of gifts being sent by um, the shoe. Um, which are poisoned gifts, and he he's wondering if he can see any signs of poison or uh, um, on the on the hilt. Uh, roll investigation for me. Um, no, um, but I wince and go pale and um, and and don't. Really, my, my vision blurs. I hardly see the, the, the hilt. Never mind anything. I got a six. Maybe the, uh, the heady cumus uh, and then the broke rib pain that makes you swoon uh, before you can properly discern the blade. It's offered up to Tanaka by Aslan. At least uh, you guys can see that the blade is a Toygen make, uh, presumably. Uh, it would be flat uh, and heavy at one side and sharp uh, and keening uh, on the other, rising up with like a horseman's uh, curve uh, for slashing down at foes uh, while mounted. It's not an ornamental uh, weapon, but for the wolf uh, carving, and there's no great wealth about the sword compared to like others you can imagine uh, Khan's wielding. Uh, but just by the sheer uh, reverence that Aslan and uh, Odin, uh, Osen, sorry, have for the, uh, the blade, uh, Seems a fine thing, uh, even to the untrained eye. It's probably to Tanaka's eye. It's uh, the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. As he gazes at it and puts his hands underneath to lift the weight of the blade from the, the old man's palms. Anyway, kind of turn it and turn himself towards the, the siblings and look at them before looking back down at the blade. Uh, wrapping his, his hand around the hilt. Uh, there's a look of relief that passes over Aslan as you like take the blade uh, and offer no like harsh words uh, afterwards, uh, and he will like rise up uh, from his bow. Furthermore, Khan, I had agreed with your father that come the spring, I would serve the Nikon till his son Altair should come into his succession. I had intended to fulfill my oath, but found the Khan Kokchu, he pauses, not to my liking. My suspicions confirmed when he sent men against me on the road, presumably to take this blade promise to Yagai's son. Uh, and where there's like reverence and genuine, like uh, it seems genuine, these words from Aslan, his son has a dark look, maybe that I think Sanai and uh, Chul and Tanaka would notice while cut and swoons. The boy seems to like rattle the man, I should say. The son rankles underneath the father's word, uh, though offers you know, no protest. Perhaps he doesn't deem the death of his cousins to be worth the price of honouring words to a dead Khan. But he doesn't speak those thoughts even if he thinks them. I don't think Tanaka would spy that. I think he'd be too... He'd be... Um saying to the old man, you know, if you wish to fulfill your obligations, you can do so here. This is the wolf, children will say in gesture. I would serve here if you would have me. <coughs> you would be most welcome.
would you also choose to serve with your father? Osun looks across uh, to the sister of the Khan. I would, he says, but it's more like ritual uh, and like 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 rhetoric or um, obligated than like the genuine nature of Aslan's words. Almost like he's like suppressing contempt uh, when he says it. Like maybe he wouldn't say it if he was his own man. Once you become a wolf, if you'll become one of our people, then you'll serve us and we'll look after you. We're a pack. But you have to you have to give to get. And he'll like uh, sniff the air uh, for a moment and then like look at the uh, the sun uh, with this like knowing look as if he like can smell his uh, uncertainty. It makes him uncomfortable. Uh, the father maybe doesn't notice wholly what transpires there, but he says, of course I will serve and give my craft to your camp. My son learns my trade, though he's not as skilled yet. He is an intelligence which bears fruit uh, more often than rot, he says, with a little softness, looking back at his son, before back to you, Tanaka. I would offer you my craft, my iron, my fire, my milk and salt uh, and meat. Uh, if you will protect me, Khan, uh, then I will give my oath. For all that and more, of course I will. I'll the old man it. relaxes and smiles at that. Sorry, you go. No, no, and you go. And the son kind of nods reverentially, though not with no show, show of mirth or affection, though. I think um, I think this is an appropriate moment to kind of call for a feast, you know, a, a proper one, either tonight or tomorrow, to welcome these Aslan and his son. Given the amount of people and resource uh, you have here, I think uh, if you wish to have a like to feast this evening, uh, it could be done. Though if you wanted to wait till tomorrow, that could be done too. Even goats enough that one could be slaughtered, uh, and like a spring salad, uh, salads made up, uh, and a small amount of arak, uh, and a large amount of kumis, uh, enough for each uh, of the feasters to slake their thirst. Yeah, I think sooner uh, rather than later is better. With that, Torkogana will go and slit uh, the youngest goat's throat and hang it up to drain and prepare the hearth uh, for a feast this evening. Aslan will bow uh, and call for his son with his eyes to follow him out, thanking you again uh, and knowing not to overstay his welcome. I will uh, be honoured to attend at your feast, Khan, and so will my son. And it almost like he goes to give him a nudge and the son will acquiesce and nod as well before they exit and go back to the guest girl. Well, not the guests go anymore. They go to erect their own at the appropriate distance from yours, Tanaka. And the mutton spits uh, on the skewers over the hearth and Tokugana and Ibuka grab ladles of like the goat fat and like ladle it uh, back over the top of the meat uh, as they turn it uh, over the flames and Desen laughs, uh, guess, uh, Geren laughs, sorry, and Dash uh, follows his suit, not understanding the joke banging too heavily on the bench set up near where like the fragrant spices are sprinkled over the uh, the glistening meat. Mm. Sun sets, uh, Arak uh, is passed amongst the adult and Kumis is passed amongst everyone. Uh, Chulin won't be like as merry or mirthful as usual and I think he'll be keeping like a close eye on uh, Osun. 
uh, not like staring them down, but just like keeping an eye on him as the evening goes. Um, and he might try and find like a moment to talk to him. Yeah, you can move past where Katoda sits uh, next to Orgel, uh, meekly like sipping at a Kumis, uh, still like um, quiet uh, in the midst of these strangers. Uh, and you can go over nearby to Ozen until he will turn uh, Khan's brother uh, and he'll give like a formal kind of bow to you and raise his cup. Yeah, I'll sit next to him. Um, and I like look at my hands, which are like, gnarled from punching trees and from like uh punching rocks and like all of the training that like Tulin has done over his life um like pr like really noticeable like knuckles and he'll like just like flex them a few times i uh the first man i killed i broke his back because i thought that was the better way to do it not to spill blood now, I don't really worry about that so much, as long as the job gets done. <coughs> the Skyfather says that it is wrong to spill noble blood. We haven't fought too many noble people. That gets a smile from him, uh, and he'll sip at his drink. I have not yet killed a man. They look forward to the glorious moment and would do so without hesitation if asked by my Khan. He says in that way that only someone who has never been confronted like that yeah. says it. Hmm. The Khan uh, is noble. And he's wise and thoughtful. And he can be merciful and generous he has to be he has to look after all these people he just uh, not gestures but he kind of looks around and from his facial expressions it looks like he is thinking but definitely not saying what these 10 people <laughs> <laughs> yeah he has to be warm and kind in some ways he has to make a name so that people will come and serve. And so he cannot sully his name by spilling blood of nobles. But I'm not the Khan. And sometimes, sometimes things have to be done and it's maybe better that he doesn't know. And sometimes I can smell a lie. And I think that you are hesitant to be here. I think that you think you have earned a more glorious place. And yet you tell me you never killed a man. And you look at disdain, at the gifts that are given to you. You turn your nose up at the talents your father has taught you. That sort of behavior will not go well for you here. And while the Khan may not do anything about it, because his name is important, mine is not. The facade uh, slowly evaporates uh, from his face and he tries to hold your gaze for an uncomfortable 12 seconds or so, but eventually is forced uh, to look down to his cup uh, and bows it or nods his head slightly. I understand. I think that you can be a very useful member of this tribe, and I think that's what I want, and that's what Tanaka wants. That's what we all want. What we don't want is you looking for greener grasses in places that they don't exist, in places that you cannot go. And we do not want your ancestors to be staring down at you for a selfish decision that you make sometime in the future. If you are part of this tribe, 
then you are entirely a part of this tribe. And if you are not entirely a part of this tribe, then I'll break your back. Have a rare morsel of inspiration, Lord, uh, for an exceptional intimidation. <laughs> he will not say anything but catch your meaning uh, and turn uh, to move away and mull uh, upon your words, uh, juxtaposed by the mirth uh, of the feast uh, and most of the feasters around him, bar perhaps Katoda. While Chulun was speaking with Osun, um, Kadan approached um, Aslan and, and asks, um, on your journey here, did you venture near the Kasidi lands where our father Yargai travelled with our brother Altai and they met their deaths? I travelled through their lands on the way uh, to meet with your father and then he kind of falters and raises his cup uh, taking a swallow before continuing. Uh, but on the way uh, here, thereafter, we headed west, not south again. The Cassidy seemed to prosper well enough. Were there any stories of how our father came about his wounds and what happened to our brother Altai? He pauses for a moment. I... A man hears all kinds of things when Arag is on the breath uh, and boasts are flung heavy about the fire, uh, Khan's brother. When emotions are running strong, as they do in blood, when we talk about our father and our brother, then a man should choose his words carefully and sift through gossip and choose what is wise to say but I would be well I say I would be I'm sure I and my brothers and sisters would be very grateful to hear this what you think is the truth when you have had time to compose your thoughts Cassidy warriors that I heard boldly and shamefully laughed at any talk of the death of Yagai and his son. They spoke with no honour of them, and I worry. I worry for what part they played in Cockchu's rise to power. You think and worry at how fat they seem to be getting ripping as they did alongside the Nikon at the Komani Corpse. You think Cockchew... You Only think Cock... Sorry. Only the rumours and boasting of drunk warriors. And he says that like he 90% believes what he just said. Though we passed peacefully enough through their lands, I cannot say, say the same for Yagai's successor, the taken to the swallow of Kumis. He forced me to present the sword, and I told him that it was not for him. He allowed me to go publicly, but then after sent two uh, to follow us. One night they fell upon our camp. He'll lift his deal aside and show like a rough gouge down his collarbone that's like nodding. Uh, together uh, under a scab. My nephews were not so lucky, and he'll drain the, the full rest of his like wooden beaker of kumis uh, at that, uh, and sh and look away so you don't see the shame gl uh, glinting in his eyes. Forgive me, uh, the spring dust, he says, uh, like snorting at his nose.
Sana, what are you doing at this moment? Uh, Sana has been watching uh, the festivities and she has taken note that they've gathered several men and um, several women, but uh, only the uh, the one man and and his uh, was it his brother who's very good with horses. Uh, oh, just his friend, like. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, no, no, uh, uh, Dash and Gellin, yeah, yeah, brothers. Yeah, uh, and then she looks at uh, Aslan, who is old, and Osan, who uh, has a sour look on his face. Uh, she'll sit next to Tanaka. Tanaka, uh, how did? The Nikon become a large clan. You can raid and steal women, but you cannot raid and steal a warrior. What will you do? It's not so dissimilar. You have to steal their heart. In either case. There's those out there that will hear of the raids we've done, and they will trickle down to us, and we can short, sort out the, the wolf from the sheep. And do you think they will come to us? Come and find us? Some. In the beginning, and then more, and then more still. You are more patient than I. It seems too slow. Patience is what's needed, though. As galling as it can be sometimes. Do you have an alternative suggestion, Sanai? Has some warrior caught your eye that you fancy capturing and dragging back here as your husband? A warrior that I could capture is not fit to be a husband. <laughs> I... No. No, Katan, I do not have a better idea. I am just impatient to have a comment that is more than, well, <laughs> just kind of gestures. I believe Tanaka um, speaks with wisdom, though. This is a difficult time. We will have small numbers and <laughs> we are vulnerable and small but if we survive if we if we if every time they come and try to crush us we survive and keep moving and and raid and keep ourselves strong and prosperous then warriors who are this um who are who are not content with their Khan will when an argument happens in the in the Urdu, they will make their way away and seek to find a new Khan and a new young a new young Khan, a new young tribe will be an appealing thing for for these warriors. A band of young warriors would be good. Ten men can grow into a mighty army. What of the Nikon, Tanaka? Oh, 
solve them. They should be our people. They should be our Khanate. You should be Khan of the Nikon. And they will have the, the option. But when? Surely Koktu grows stronger and fatter every day. When Tanaka has proven himself a greater Khan, then... Tanaka is ten times the Khan that Koktu ever will be. Hmm. But it... More than my sister needs to say that. Have enough people believe that? Then by the time we face Koktu, he has already lost. Koktu. Hmm. The people, the Khan chose Koktu. The warriors in the Nikan listened to his, his orders, obeyed his orders. They did not look to us and obey us. It's only when they become discontent and with Koktu and more confident in our ability to feed them over the winters to raid and gather resources that they will come to us and choose Tanaka again as their preferred Tanaka as their Khan. Being a Khan is a lot more than being a warrior. I understand. And Tanaka, you spoke of winning their hearts, but it seems a slow thing to do. And I am not patient. <laughs> it is a slow thing, but only a few seasons ago, we had nothing at all. And look how far we've come. Yes, and only a few seasons ago, Kadan fell off his horse trying to do tricks. Oh, wait. That was yesterday. <laughs> I learn a lot overnight. She'll, like, jab you gently. He <coughs> <laughs> <It> goes white. <laughs> I think you've just knocked him unconscious. She looks a little smug. <laughs> Tokugana uh, will produce uh, a cur, like a wooden box uh, strung with horse hair. Uh, and we're again uh, plowing it with a bow, uh, producing uh, sweet nights uh, that cut across the sound of the spitting mutton. Geralt will add his voice, uh, throat singing, uh, and Dash next to him will clap happily uh, in a syncopated uh, fashion uh, while people tear into the skewered goat and pass the cumus bladder uh, as the moon well and truly uh, rises up uh, into the evening. I think that's a good place to take a bio break, five minutes, smoky wheeze and such, and then come back. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Okay. Nice one. Yeah, mate. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. I... Um, but, uh...
Uh, Caius, dear, if you're talking, I can barely hear you. Oh, just at the uh, moment, or? Yeah, just now. Oh, I was listening to something in the background, so that might have been it. <laughs> ah, okay. Sorry, I thought you were trying to get my attention. I was like, what? <laughs> no, I was just, I was just trying to get the. I hadn't written down the notes of my wound, so I'd just gone back to that bit and was replaying it. Yeah. Are you very garlic breathed? I am eating garlic toast like it's going out of style, and I have more tea steeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm in the same. I'm doing the same. Oh. Hey, Lloyd. Did you did did you get my link for the a book? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yep, good. I was out last night, so I didn't respond because I was uh, pissed beyond belief. But thank no, you. I, well, I do. <laughs> I see you today, so I, I I thought I'd check it today. Good. Um, and you haven't read it or anything like that? No, I haven't. No, uh, I'm definitely going to pick it up. Good. <clears throat> I really liked making that threat. It was very satisfying. Yeah, that was well done. <laughs> it was so good. It felt yeah. very uh, Wagner-y from Saga, you know? It, it did. And it was a little like mafia. Yeah, it was like really like, it was barely a threat. <sighs> you, know? uh, you, totally, you said, I will break your back. That is definitely a threat. <laughs> yeah. Up until that point, it was like that's what I liked about it. It was like 
that's Doug Durand, and at the end, like, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> that was great. Mm. And you got inspiration in a Nico game, man. Yeah, a pearl. <laughs> Hang on, I have a small child yelling for me. I'll be right back. Are you feeling very hungover then? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I got back home at like eight in the morning. Um uh. just in bits. Uh and I woke up at like five, had some dinner, and then just like lay on my bed until this game started. <laughs> I watched that Outlaw King um film on Netflix, the Rob uh, Rob the Bruce. Uh-huh. Thing. It's actually all right. I thought it was. I mean, it's actiony and you know probably not very historical, but it was. There's a really miserable battle scene, and they're quite liked. <laughs> uh, ah, miserable on. as in good. Yeah, like it looked awful and like yeah. horrible. You know, uh, yeah. it felt like chaotic and like it felt like a battle. Nobody here ever played Captain Kirk ship with Robert the Bruce. I'm pretty sure that's been written <laughs> yeah. somewhere. His accent is not very good. Oh. Uh. Well, it's yeah. not consistent. Sometimes it's okay, but it's not consistent, you know? Um, and it's one of those things where, like, you make a movie, why not just hire all Scottish actors if it's set in Scotland, you know? Like, uh, I'm back. What movie is this? Outlaw King came out, like, yesterday or a day before. Oh, I saw the trailer for it on Netflix. Yep, it's pretty good. Um, Bruce Bolton plays uh, King Edward, which is, and he's good. Um, Stannis, you mean? Stannis, yeah, sorry, not Reese Bolton. Um, yeah, and he's very good. And it's like one of those things where you watch a movie set in that time period, and it's all the same actors because there's only so many people who are like big who can also ride a horse and swing a sword, you know? So they just <laughs> like, they appear in every sort of medieval film. <laughs> They're like, and yep, you fit the bill. <laughs> And there goes Kais. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, I think we're all here. We could go back. Yep. Yep. Hey, he's back. I'm back. I think I'm back. Is yep. anyone talking? Yep. Ah, good. Yep, we can hear you. Yep. I'm good to go if you guys are. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. If our can allows us to. <laughs> of course. I love it. And so a couple of days uh, have passed uh, after the raiding uh, the Zemagidi folding ground. Uh, and you've been convalescing uh, well uh, in the camp, uh, Chalun, seeing to the uh, running of things there. Uh, Sinai. You've taken your horse uh, uh, and another uh, laden with some few supplies out beyond the ridges, past the marmot holes west, closer towards the uh, the gold way, uh, looking for other uh, foraging grounds or promising hunting uh, places. And you've spied uh, a caravan wending its way uh, along the snaking road, a little uh, plume of dust uh, trailing behind it and even from here atop your own uh, Steed, you can see the glint uh, of metal uh, of mounted uh, folk uh, about what what seems to be two wagons or a wagon and a cart is probably more apt. Uh, you see several figures, you know, half a dozen or more, uh, about the caravans, but from this distance, uh, who they are, what their business may be, uh, you could not tell. You have to risk being seen uh, to grab a closer glance uh, or approach by night. Now, there's an afternoon glare, so I'd say it's just uh, afternoon, uh, an hour or so uh, after the noon.
Is it me and Sano? <coughs> the Chulun's in the camp. Uh, Sano's uh, out west. Uh, uh, and Karan uh, scouting to the north, but I thought I'd throw to um, where Sano is first. Mm -hmm. uh, you said west there? Yep, west of the Marmot Hollows, uh, close towards where the Goldway is. Uh, Asana would, uh, uh, if she's on her horse, she'll wheel back um, the direction towards whichever of her brothers is going to be closest. Um, which, um, if it's in the north, that was uh, Chulun. That's right, north of Marmot Hollows is where he was scouting. Uh, so she'll kind of wheel her horse to the right, um, and as she uh, comes uh, around towards where she thinks he might be, she'll uh, let out one of their bird whistles uh, to try and find him and get his attention. He'll be able to hear it uh, in the distance after a couple of calls, uh, and in less than an hour, uh, both of you could be north of that initial position, uh, paralleling the Goldway uh, and gaining spy in the distance of this lone uh, caravan traipsing its way uh, through the the pass. Do they look like they're Chugans, or do they look like they might be foreigners? I need a perception check uh, from here to see. Uh, 15. If I can get my dice back out. <laughs> Natural one. And Karano Tanaka? Are we there? Oh, I think Someone I was just gra grabbing... Thing. I was just grabbing Chulun, because uh, he was oh, closest. Oh, sorry, my bad. I thought you, were, I thought you said Karan. My bad. Oh, that's a bit confused. Yeah, in that case, you can see uh, that there's eight figures mounted, not on horses, but camels, about a large wagon uh, and a smaller cart being hauled by beasts of burden. Uh, but, like, who the people are, uh, you could not say. Because they're mounted on camels, you could guess that, guess that they're Rashomon, Rothvarian, uh, or come from further south. Uh, but you couldn't be certain, because uh, even some Chugan tribes uh, use the camels. So, um, Would it be... Like, so we're poor and we need things. Can we just like, is it like crazy to just like attack this caravan and take their stuff? Or like, is it more normal that we would like deal with them? Uh, it depends if you needed to trade stuff with them, you could deal with them, but you don't know what they have uh, or who they are. And as far as like just raiding on the Goldway goes, it's like the act uh, of brigands. Uh, but like, if no one survives, then no, there's no one who can be called brigands. Okay. Yagai didn't indulge in stu this stuff as much as you know, but then again, uh, his his Khan had successful times. Wasn't out in the wastes living off marmots uh, with like a dozen followers. There's no like, uh, I guess, law, <laughs> implicit like Chugan law against it, uh, but it's become uncommon these days since the decline of the Golden Khanate and the rise of the Shao uh, to the east. Caravans like this are usually uh, well guarded uh, or heavily guarded or both. Okay. So I guess we should tell Tanaka. Um, so I would say uh, keep an eye on them and I'll go and tell uh, the can and see what he wants to do. If they're like come, if they're coming directly for us, like do you think does it seem like they've seen our settlement and are coming? No, they're sticking to the goldway, like the, the road uh, that cuts through the middle here. Um, they could head to your car, I guess, if you wanted them to or if they had intended to, but pr probably not with those carts, uh, wagon. You think it more likely that they're just passing through this region and following the goldway up and will probably follow it on veering north uh, and then east again, uh, which will take them okay. across the bridge at the winding uh, and further on towards the dragon wall. And ask Tanaka if he has things we would wish to trade. They could have supplies, something other than marmot meat. That would be nice. Uh, I'll turn my horse uh, and go. Yeah, 
Yeah, and so and I will uh, stay and just kind of from her position, keep an eye on them and see if there are any riders that are ranging out or if they uh, look like they're going to veer towards the encampment. You think it's possible that they may have seen you and your brother, uh, even as he like rides back to inform the Khan? Uh, they do not seem to like veer towards you, though. Uh, and what riders there are that are columning this caravan, don't veer uh, far away from it, whether they've seen you or not, you're not sure. Oh, there's a small patch uh, of Serg flowers uh, that a fairly brave uh, bee uh, has come to hum around. You can shoo it uh, and get in and pluck a few of the choicer ones uh, cut on. The smell is sweet, but your sniffing is interrupted as you hear the galloping of hooves from the distance. You can see uh, your older brother uh, approaching your oldest uh, where he sits mounted in his steed. Staring fatherly north, uh, watching the trail into the Marmot Hollows. I'll I'll head back and see what's happening. Yeah, you could see uh, Cutan's horse horse is uh, lathered pretty bad, uh, and his face is flush. Oh, not Cutan, sorry, Chulun, and so he's probably been riding hard. Yes, yeah, so I'll make my way in quick. I'll grab a last handful of these of these um, sweet smelling shrubs and then make my way in to see what news children has brought there's a caravan i think there might be foreigners camels two carts they're going along the gold way do we want to trade with them do we want to follow them till nighttime and take what they have oh, it'd be good to meet before might not have anything to trade or anything worth trading. But news. News would be good. Yeah, he'll nod. How many guards did they have? Uh, Twelve? Eight? Okay, eight. Yeah, I guess he was an eight mounted. Um, I couldn't get like a good count in total, and like there might have been men in the wagons, and I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So, when we approach, we want to appear not to be a major threat. So, I guess just the four of us. The four of us are a major threat to anyone. To ourselves. If we call warning uh, and don't approach aggressively, I'm sure people stop them and trade with them uh, all along their journey. Perhaps. Best to be overly cautious, though. So there's the idea the three of you will cut west to find Sane and then approach the wagon? Yeah, take take what meager things we have to trade. Yeah, uh, you guys can see in that document whatever you guys want what, or to get an idea of what you yeah. have. We actually have lots of stuff we can trade. It depends what Kadan's already put in his pockets, I guess. And Kadan may need to be relieved of some of his shiny accoutrements. Just turn him upside down and shake him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's like a, a raccoon. He's got a hidey hole somewhere. My yeah. crow. <laughs> There's certainly a bunch of weapons and armor. Um... Yeah, and we've got some necklaces and stuff like that as well. That yeah. Yeah. yeah, and those silver pieces, which the yeah the twelve cent. Uh, well, that's good as uh, necklace. Yeah, it, yeah it is. 
But if they have something really nice, we might. Uh... Oh, I would say what we do want to get from them are things like arrows, uh, you know, bowstrings, things that we don't make. Maybe I don't. Know, we probably make our own bowstrings, but like, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, things that we struggle to make or like uh, have difficulty finding, you know. Yeah, don't go for the thing that looks nice. Go for the thing that's resourceful. Yes. Yeah, I've got anything at all. Probably have, like some nice forest. soft mermit fur. Okay, so let's ride. So initially, uh, the mounted uh, camel riders will form up uh, around the front of the caravans, uh, looking to your eyes like making ready a charge, though it never comes as you go closer, uh, looking like having peaceful intentions uh, and weapons undrawn. And though still vigilant, the camel riders will relax uh, somewhat. One of them uh, in a curved uh, steel helm uh, wrapped about with brown fabric uh, to ward off the sun. Uh, spurs uh, his mount forward and the dromedary like, plods up uh, towards you guys uh, through the uh, uh, through the earth uh, and he lifts like a little visor panel uh, from the front of the curved helm uh, and shouts out uh, first in a language uh, you don't understand uh, curving uh, consonants uh, riddled through it uh, and then uh, in a trade tongue what do you want, Horde Landers? If it's trouble, you'll find more than you bargained for. Beyond through this man, you can see uh, those others, not like uniformed, but definitely like of a similar ilk uh, and garb, uh, are within earshot, uh, waiting tensed on their mounts. And behind them, uh, the driver of each wain uh, has hauled their caravan up. Uh, and there's a panel uh, on the side of one of the, uh, or the foremost wagon side, uh, which is thrust outward. And a, a short, statured, squat, uh, bristling head uh, figure uh, ungracefully descends, uh, yabbering what must be curses, given the evidence. The driver looks amongst you, uh, waiting to see if there's any glimmer of recognition. If none of you uh, speak uh, the trade tongue, he'll turn back and give a whistle through his teeth, and one of the riders will spur up. You take him immediately as a chuigan. I wonder if his origin is east or west uh, of the winding before you I, can know. Uh, I think oh, we sorry. all do have trade tongue uh, from our background. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, in that case, you understand. Uh, we have more trouble than we need. We're not looking for any more. Children will say. It's just not trouble we come to bargain with. It's trade goods. Now the rider who challenged you seems a bit more relaxed at that uh, and turns here in the approach uh, of what you guys see as obviously one of the road folk uh, dwarf of the of the spires uh, further southwest of here he's quite finely garbed uh, cool linen shifts uh, against the heat uh, he's obviously like been at drink and he's well fed his fingers bristle uh, with a few silver and gold uh, tokens and his fine boots crumple over the gravel uh, as he uh, ambles up, uh, shifting his weight from one foot to the other till he goes close, close enough uh, to inquire uh, in some tongue you don't understand before, like the rider, settling uh, to trade tongue. Trade, is it? Well, it's hot. Uh, we have places to be. But if your goods are worth it, perhaps Volchi will spare you his wrath, he says, uh, pointing to his chest. Volchi! as if he's speaking uh, to an idiot, pointing to his chest again. Janan will, like, try and suppress a chuckle, but fail. He thinks this, like, little man is very comical. <laughs> that would probably He happen. rankles at that and puts his hands on his hips, uh, and the rider tries uh, to look menacing, but has, like, a point to his face where you think maybe this has happened before. <laughs> Uh, I'll say in like our language uh, to uh, 
Sarnay next to me, it's always the little men who act very, very loud. While well, the little man in your group says says to him, um, you speak to Tanaka Khan, um, ruler of um, ruler of the the Marmot Hills and this area. You are traveling through. You are traveling on the lands. You are traveling in on his lands, but um, he is generous and only wishes to. Um, is generous and only wishes to trade. This is this all is these about. words fill out in trade tongue, uh, and the road folk, uh, the, the man in front of you, uh, looks up to the armored figure next to him and puts his hand to his ear and turns to the warrior and says, Geh, geh. And the man like rumbles, and uh, the, then the dwarf puts his hand at his belly and like puts his uh, back arch and he laughs, laughs to rival <laughs> uh, Chulun's. To the rider, and then the rider's face scrunches up a little before looking to you, gulps, and then says, uh, He's not convinced that that's wholly true. Uh, and if it is, then he is a kind of exceeding power because uh, he has double your riders. And he says, kind of like he's trying to hold a straight face and not insult you guys. Um, like the dwarf has had like some yeah, interesting words to, to retort. All of our riders are not here. <clears throat> they would shake oh, the ground. Oh, we have. Oh, we don't have any other riders. Are we not here? I actually thought <laughs> I, was, I actually didn't mean intend to lie, but I, okay. Uh, we can assume <laughs> that uh, Aslan and Osun can ride. Yeah, <laughs> it's a thirteen deception. Uh, I actually wasn't really intending to lie, though, so I maybe wouldn't say it if that's the case. You know. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, we're just seeking to trade. What do you have? Okay. He has... I found a really cool old second-day edition Hordelands, like, random caravan generator and <laughs> goods of the Hordelands, and depending on what region you're in, what kind of stuff there might be. And so rarely I use these tales, but I thought for this uh, it might be cool. So just rolled a couple of D-hundreds there. That's fun. Those old sort of setting books like are so detailed in compared to what you get nowadays. I think it's crazy. Hey, Kadam, when you're talking, <laughs> and then when you're done talking, you'd hear Sarnai kind of hiss through her teeth at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, once the writers regaled this to Volchi. Uh, he'll look back to his goods, uh, and then back to you, uh, wa wa putting his hand up on his forehead to like ward off the heat. Uh, and he'll say, uh, or the rider will translate to him, we have dates, uh, cotton, uh, two loads of brassware in the rear uh, caravan, caskets of cloves, five barrels of spearheads, and 40 pounds of wax. We're headed out of Almorel, uh, heading for the dragon wall uh, to sell it to the Shao. But you're wrong to trade some of it now. Uh, depends uh, if your goods might be uh, of more worth uh, to me in Shao lands, uh, perhaps. And he says with that kind of like grifter's curiosity. I'll say to uh, the others, like, what do we want with wax? Sorry, no, she goes, nothing. We make candles from the fat. Maybe it's good for leather? They'll, like, ask kind of no one. Then she kind of shrugs and she'll look over at uh, Tanaka. Perhaps the spearheads? Spearheads would be useful. We always need iron. Hmm, perhaps. Uh, what have you to trade for it? He's sceptical that you will have enough wealth to pay for so much steel. 
though usually you can, or sometimes, sorry, you can get better prices for steel here in the Horde lands than beyond where it's more plentiful. Hmm. So I think like for us as like, we have more weapons than we need. So then why would we buy weapons? Do you know? Mm. I was thinking spears are good uh, for bracing and defending uh, the Connet. Uh, wolves only ever attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're good for bracing and defending. <laughs> sure, listen. Um, I don't know, like, what I'm saying, like, we have quite a few nice weapons, and so if we're going to trade some of those weapons for just spearheads, I don't really see what we're getting out of it. And I don't know if, like, the uh, the stuff that we have, like a silver tooth, you know, uh, necklace, is going to be enough to pay for it. Yeah, I mean, maybe the bronze talk, uh, torque, I don't know how much that is in silver. Like, in terms of I imagine that that's not great wealth as pocket change. Yeah, this guy is like finely garbed and has several people under his employing, including like armed riders and seems to like uh, be of advanced, not advanced age, I should say, but like uh, middle age or older. It's hard to tell. This might be the first road folk you've ever in, uh, interacted with. It's likely that he has things uh, between uh, his caravan other than what he's like omitted to you, uh, like what he's said to you guys. Arrows? Trinan will ask. Uh, he'll look to the rider to translate and then kind of shake his head. Uh, no, but if you've skilled smiths, uh, you can use uh, arrowheads uh, to produce, uh, sorry, spearheads to produce arrowheads. Mm, potions? Uh, my master says uh, he is no witch or warlock and does not trade uh, in like sorcerous things like that. The Xiao heavily police them, even here on the Goldway. Uh, you can roll an insight. Uh, yes, I sure will. Oh, it's pretty good. It's a 21. Yeah, even though you can't understand the words that Volchi said to that rider, uh, perhaps uh, that it's not entirely truthful what you just uh, heard. Uh, we could pay good for uh, things that can heal wounds. My master says he has told you of his wealth. He would hear of yours uh, to see what might be worth trading. But we don't know if we want to buy anything. <laughs> My master says, if not, then let us uh, pass on our way, mighty Khan. And then he kind of scrunches his lips up at that to like stifle a smile or, or to, like risk insulting warriors on the road. But there's a glint in Volchi's eyes uh, that smells like piss to you, Chalun, uh, when he like says that remark to have it translated by the writer uh, across to you. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I think he's like hilarious, or Chulin thinks he's hilarious. This like little man who thinks he's very important, <laughs> and like, he keeps uh, throwing insults our way. Uh, like it's the kind of thing that like Chulin thinks the guy would have maybe, maybe had in like uh, a feast, like brought in a man like this uh, to laugh at. And so he's like not offended by any of the bullshit that he's like spouting. Um, he's just trying to figure out if we can buy some like something useful off him. Um, but it doesn't seem like there's anything there. That Chulun would want to like give away a lot of stuff for. Yeah, the litany of stuff he had, like <laughs> to a Western merchant or like a Shia bureaucrat, like gold mine. But as far as like your Nike and eyes go, like the like the or, or ears go, all that stuff that he listed, like that's a whole lot of pompery, really. Yeah, like, cloves and brassware, and like come on. But uh, I guess what to, what you would notice as valuable to you guys is like the fine quality tack and harness and armor uh, of the. Warriors, the usefulness uh, of their camels, the beasts of burden, uh, the wagons and woods of the barrels and crates themselves for like the purpose of building stuff. Like it's a rare thing out on the plains, even at this time of year, like good wood. Uh, yeah. So like <laughs> all the stuff he talks about as being 
worth a lot for trading to people of his ilk is inside the wagons. But to, as far as Nike can go, all the other wealth's on the outside because there's like wealth in steel uh, and good steeds and war tack uh, and food, which these guys obviously had because, have, sorry, because they all seem to be in good health. Uh, and if they're if what he's saying is true, that they're traveling from Al Morel to the Dragon Wall, they still got like another fortnight at least uh, of traveling, uh, if not more. So they surely have stores of supplies and in rude health. Uh, you have uh, cloves and barrels. Uh, we don't want the cloves, but can we buy the barrels? He laughs and is translated to a set of, of course not, we need those to transport the cloves. Uh, one barrel of these will <coughs> fetch a thousand uh, shen uh, from a fine Xiao noble one, woman. Uh, I'd rather not lose that uh, profit uh, to give wood uh to a member of a carnate would translate the rider, but obviously Volchi said something different than that. <laughs> Tell this cockless turd that we will not sell him the barrels for our club. <laughs> My master wishes to say we will not sell you the barrel wood. Should I like shrug and like look at Tanaka um, and say the wood is more valuable than any of the any of the stuff inside of them. I don't know uh, if this is worth our time, but we could always, nah, there's a shrug. Oh, that could kind of kind of look at you, if you uh, anticipating there was something else there. Uh, he was going to say we could just follow him in the night and uh, steal it, but I realised that one of the guys speaks our language, and so I stopped. Ah. Maj mara bajau, you are quad gwarwa. And then the rider kind of grumbles and then says something back, whispered to the man, again. And so the rider looks back to you and clears his throat and says, he asks how much for the slave, and he points towards Sanai. He says he will pay you half a barrel of spearheads for her. She's not a <laughs> slave. Oh, my master uh, bids you uh, forgive him for his words. Tell him he owes us for that. Uh, he like tr uh, trans uh, speaks with the uh, with Volchi, who seems to like go a little irate and like stamps his foot, yabbering back to the man who says. Uh, he says he owes you nothing. If anything, you owe him for his time, which is more precious uh, than to be spent blathering with <clears throat> members of this car, Ned. This little shit. I could tear his head off for the insult he gave my sister and break him in half. The man bridles at that uh, and his horse takes a few like nervous steps forward and then sideways, uh, like worrying at the, at the rider. And... Uh... And Cadden points at the dwarf and says, and this one looks like he's already been broken in half. He points his spear at you. You'll do well uh, to keep your insults to my master, uh, to yourself. If there's no further business, we'll be on our way. And Volchi's like, what What did he say? What the fuck did that heathen just say? But to you, it just sounds like, bada, 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 bada. Chilun will just like uh, narrow his eyes um, and just like crack uh, the knuckles on each hand. Uh, and he'll like look at the dwarf um, and just like stare at him for a few seconds before like <laughs> spitting onto the ground uh, and looking at Tanaka like, let's leave before we kill someone. Yeah, Tanaka's going to move the, that spear that was set forth aside and uh, turn his horse around. Volchi's like yabbering uh, irately. <laughs> especially after you spit Shalun and pointing towards you uh, at his warriors and the riders like conversing with him. We're going. Thank you for your time. He hurls unintelligible insults. Uh, those riders uh, do not follow you uh, away from the path and down to the trail. That's eventually, so nice. if you look over your shoulder, you could see Volti returning to his wagons, and if you watch for a time, you'd see them eventually like pull forward again. 
Sorry, uh, Taylor, to interrupt you. She's deeply offended and considers a rude gesture that is universal, but thinks better of it. Oh, uh, Cadden's not... Cadden's ship, um, calling them black-headed yurt slaves and things like that as for insulting my sister. In trade town? Um, no, because he knows the insult. I think he doesn't know that many insults in trade town. He knows them in native Tegan better. So he's, he's expressing himself in his native tongue. Insults in a foreign language always sound strange. <laughs> we should, uh, as we're like riding away, um, we could steal from them and wait until they're asleep. Although <clears throat> the sneaking didn't work very well last time. That perhaps it'll be different this time. Maybe. A lot of men. Face like a rod. I will take down eight. <laughs> <laughs> like Chillin wants to laugh at that, but also he remembers when, like, only a few nights ago, that he was like surrounded by a bunch of guys and nearly got killed. Um, and he'll like look uh, at them uh, and like wrinkle his nose. I don't think it's wise. We fought those men in the uh, Zamagiri camp. Some of them were boys. Some of them were, were not warriors. These, they take uh, silver from that little shit uh, to kill for a living. Can I at least kill that one? No. You are not Khan here. Tanaka, what do you say? Oh, you can fight over who gets to kill the little shit when you have the little shit. Are you... So we are raiding? I believe so. Sarnai's eyes light up and she just gives you the biggest smile. <sighs> that one is mine, though. I think that this is a bad idea. I think there are too many of them and not enough of us. Chulun, stop speaking reason. Just let me be angry. Be angry. Don't be stupid. We laugh now and say, yes, it'll be very exciting to raid and we'll kill the dwarf, but then we get there and there are 15 of them. And then they stab me a hundred times, and then they kill Kadan. I will and stand in front of you if you are afraid. You are being childish. And you know it. It's not your decision. He'll shrug. I will do as I'm told, but I don't think it's a good idea, and I think someone will die. I think it can be done, but without all of you with me on this, I don't feel like I'd do it. And if it happens the same way, if Gan gets seen going in, and they all wake up, and I get there before the rest of you, because I will. Then it's your own fault for going too fast. If I could have kept up with you, it have, would have been better. And if I hadn't gotten there so fast, Kadam would be dead. I am more resilient and resourceful than I think you give me credit for. I give I you am... plenty of credit. 
but you are not immortal. No, Sorry. I am. Fun, I pokes you in the rib again. They are not going to be as unprepared as the Zemagiri. They're going to be ready. They're going to have a tight camp. They're going to be organized. I think it's a bad idea. For what purpose? For some spearheads? For some wood? Hmm. If we don't kill Kellen, all of them? Kellen shrugs and looks again at um, Tanaka. Well, as I say, if Chogun isn't with me in this, if you all aren't with me on this, then it is not something to pursue. Fine. And the Sarnai will uh, like wheel her horse off to the side and go back west where she'd initially been scouting. Chilin would like look at Tanaka. I'm not telling you what to do. You're the can. I'm just trying to give advice, and I think that this can only end poorly. Oh, I know. I do hate your advice. Perhaps I was being too hot headed at the moment. I want to kill that little fucker <coughs> as much as you do. But there are many men, and we are not fully recovered. Just quickly out of gate, or sort of describe what... Hmm, um, Kadan looks over at, um, at Chulun. What is your injury? What, what sort of... How... What is your main um, injury? So mechanically, I was brought down to two hit points in that encounter. Uh, uh -huh. So he's just like very close to death. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I think he's like, or as far as I'm concerned, he's like very, maybe like shaken, you know, yeah. from the, the experience. And so he's like not as willing now to just like run mentally into a, uh, into an encounter for what he perceives to be no real profit, you know. Mm. Kadan's a little bit surprised at your caution. Not well, not your caution, but just that you were hit so many times because he's seen you fight before and um, be in the center and avoid loads of blows. And he thought you were in sort of, but he's he's sort of reassessing the situation a little bit. And he says afterwards, "Yes, I'm sorry I left you there. I didn't." Hmm. I'm sorry I left you on your own. He I knows. will not again. I Brother. had to go and save you. That's all there is to it. But I stand by my second um, decision of trying to take the, trying to convince the, the father and the son to join us. It didn't work, but I could have done. And we need men. I, I don't know. I don't know if men pressed into service against their will are as good as men who come seeking to serve. The wolf chained uh, and put in its place and beaten into submission, I don't think is the same as a wolf that runs free. Mm. It is a good point, though. We do need warriors and we need riders. We need men.
Kellen shrugs. Maybe your knowledge of people is more accurate, but I'm not sure his son, when somebody's son was in danger, I, but part of it was I was not, I, I am not happy killing children. I'm not happy about it either. But sometimes it's you, it's us, or them. Cock two didn't kill us because we were children. And, and what what a foolish mistake that was. But if you ignore the customs of a people, will you will we attract people? I don't know. Killing kill, killing children might alienate more people than anything else. I'm not. It's not an easy. Um, not an easy thing to decide. No, I don't want to, and I didn't want to, but he had blown the horn. I told oh, him not to. At that stage, yes, but uh, earlier on, I don't know. It's not an easy decision. It's not an easy riddle to figure out, and I don't know what the answer is. But when I'm faced with questions like that, I always pick the answer that keeps us alive. Mm. Yes, you think in the sh you think in the here and now, and I often think perhaps too far in the future. Well, we need all of those different thoughts. Between the four of us, we have just about one working mind. <laughs> Now, do you think Sanai, now that she's gone out of sight, do you think she's going to wheel around and try and attack that man on her own? I say my eyes lighting up. Shall we go after her? Shilun hadn't even considered that that was a possibility, and now his eyes would, like, widen with, like, oh, God, that could happen. Uh, and he would, like, nod. Yeah! Okay. Yeah, so I think Sarnay, uh, you know, she's she's going west. She's not scouting. She's probably going, you know, even outside of their area that she normally uh, would ride, kind of what they consider their little border. Um, she's just angry and frustrated and uh, annoyed at her brothers, uh, and she'll she'll ride until the the horse is. Uh, probably uh, a bit dark with sweat and she recognizes that it needs to take a break. Yeah, you can let the reins loose uh, and the horse will stay within earshot, uh, grazing at what it can forage from the spring grasses. And I guess minutes would go by until you'd hear the sound of riders approaching or following your trail and see your brothers uh, tracking you. She rolls her eyes. Go away. We're just keeping an eye on you, Tillin will say, and he'll just like ride uh, ahead of her. Keeping you safe, shouts your younger brother. Kadana, I bet I could beat you in a fight. I don't need you to keep me safe, and I don't need you keeping an eye on me, Tillin. Yes, you do. Really? Who stood at the Battle of Horseshoe Pass and who fell? 
Ooh. Um, Canton turns around and, and grins at uh, children at that one. Uh, he'll stop his horse and get off it. Uh, and as like uh, Sano's horse approaches, he's going to like try and spook it so that it like uh, rears up. Uh, she's actually off the horse at this point. She's just like sitting on the ground, cross-legged. Okay. Uh, then he'll like come over and squat in front of you, and he'll say, "Say that again." Who stood at the Battle of Horseshoe? Wow. He's going to slap you in the side of the head. <laughs> uh, Try she'll, it. Like, she'll kick her knee up and like try and hit you between the legs from her sitting position while you're squatting. Yeah. Uh. So I probably think that children's quick enough uh, to like not get a direct kick, but it might be like a grazing. <laughs> I fell there because I had to fight a sorcerer, a wolfman, a... You were the one who jumped over the wall. You tried Kadan for being reckless, and you are all the time. You just had me there to save you. It's not the same. Why not? Because I'm older than you. And suddenly, Kadan attacks Chulun as he's often done at a drought wrestling. <laughs> no, you cannot <laughs> help wrestling. Kadan, Kadan, stay out of this. Only get you to hold. <laughs> he's probably like still talking to Sinai with like Kadan on his back, and he's like trying to like take him back down <laughs> to the ground. Kadan, stay out of this. I'm not entering the conversation, I say. Try to drive him down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably like falls to one knee and he's like trying to uh, like wrestle Kadan. He probably like puts his hand in his face and like rubs it into his like nose uh, like uncomfortably or like maybe like uh, gives him like a nuggy or something like not trying to hurt him, just like annoy him. Um, like trying to keep him at bay. I'm actually pretty good at wrestling now. I've, I've picked up a lot of sort of... Uh, I've been wrestling you for years, and I've, I've, yeah. I'm pretty wily. But, I mean, if you start using blows, I'm finished. But <laughs> yeah. in actual wrestling, I can probably hold my own. You also have to make that con save if you're going to actually wrestle. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I'll poke you in the rib. And you'll be yeah. that'll, that'll finish me off, and I'll just roll off. <laughs> I am older than both of you, and so I have to make... Difficult decisions. I have to make sure that you are safe. Your decisions don't always make sure we're safe. Your choice isn't always the right one. Just because you're older than me and older than Kadan doesn't mean you're right. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you're not the Khan. That's how it works. <laughs> Tanaka is always right because he's the Khan. And I'm only a little bit younger than him. So I'm almost always right. <laughs> Oh, Not ow. all how it works. Oh. If you were the Khan, I would listen to you, but since you're not, I don't have to. And I don't think you have good ideas all the time. Tanaka at least thinks before he leaves. Well, you need to start thinking before you speak. Or I'm going to slap you in the side of the head again. She like, puts her hands up. Do it. Uh, he'll like uh, put his hands up in a fighting stance and he'll like wave them around in front of him and then he'll like uh, when you're looking at his hands kick you uh, in the shin oh that's a dirty trick that's why I win because you have no honor because I make you look one way and I hit you in the other side you want to fight me Sinai I'll kill you I doubt it you're only little, and I'm big. You're only bigger because you're a boy. If I was a boy, I'd be as big as you. No, you're younger than me, so you'd be smaller. Not by much. I'm not as little as Kadan. Hey! <laughs> He'll be bigger than you someday. I'll always be stronger, though. My brain is bigger than both of you. Ah, then use it. <laughs> Yeah, just once. <sighs> he'll, um, oh, there you go. He'll <laughs> like, look past you, Sarnay, and he'll like 
look like sort of squint as it does something like behind you. Uh, and when you like go to uh, turn around, he'll like uh, grab you in a headlock and like give you like message your hair. Um, uh, but then like give you a hug. All right, enough <laughs> of this. Oh, no more pouting. No more whinging. You're the one who's been pouting and whinging about the Zemagidi raid. It's because I almost died, Zane. I think I'm fast. allowed to pout about that. You You're pouting. You are pouting because some comedy dwarf said something about you. It's not the same. If no one ever takes me, just leave me alone. Come on, let's go back. I'm not going back yet. Uh... Well, then I'm not either. He'll just like sit like directly opposite uh... you uh, and like look at you uh, and continuously like poke you in the leg or like talk to you. Jalun, you are insufferable. Let's go back. Fine. Uh, he'll like uh, go to give you a hand up off the ground, but then when you like take it, he'll let go and have you fall on the ground. Uh, and he'll <laughs> jump, jump up on his horse. She'll get up on hers and spur it on. I bet I'm faster than you. No chance, uh, but he'll let you win. <laughs> So you guys uh, ride off, heading back east, I assume, towards your camp uh, and Karal and Tanaka. <coughs> yeah, I presume Kadan is following us. Uh, Kadan will get there first. He's faster than both of you riding. <laughs> and what do you do, Chex? You might be muting if you're muted if you're speaking, checks. Uh, the Chekhovian technical problems. <laughs> he was probably trying to talk this whole time and was like, man, they're just talking over me. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it kind of mental that this game has had like a the brutal like murder of a child, but also like siblings playing like stupid games, wrestling? Yeah, and, like they both like fit seamlessly in the like neither of them are outside of what is acceptable for the game, which is kind of cool. Yeah, weirdly like compatible given the circumstance and culture and uh, yeah situation. It's cool and bizarre, uh, macabrely so. Can we hear you, checks? I ask. Yeah, no, nothing. no. <laughs> Your headset's not muted or something, is it? Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, cut on. As you see, like brother and sister at this uh, play fight, and they mount up. You you go uh, to your own horse. Mm -hmm. uh, First of all, what's your passive perception? 18. Can I get you to make a charisma save, please? DC 13. Um, uh, glad you asked that. Yes, you can. Um, and no, I can't. Six. You notice that strange smell uh, flutter your nostrils uh, like when Chulun uh, twists the ring of uh, Al Reed 
But by the time you turn, your head's already spinning uh, about itself, several warping uh, revolu revolutions. You kind of uh, stutter about uh, in a stunned uh, array. And through this uh, hazy uh, kaleidoscopic lens, you see this hulking figure uh, lurking uh, down from the stones uh, towards uh, where Tanaka and your own horse uh, stand grazing. Its eyes are too far apart and one much larger than the other. Uh, and teeth like boar tusks protrude out of lips, in several cases growing out of the skin and punching out uh, from the horrible jaw beneath. Uh, it lumbers uh, one, uh, like bipedally and clutching in one hand uh, this piece of wood, long and slim, uh, that seems to radiate. Could I get you to make an arcana check, please? Um. Golly, I, I've forgotten that Arcana exists. Twelve. You can't reckon uh, what it is you see. Tanaka! I, I shout, sort of um, spurring on to, towards Tanaka and hurrying. Um, oh, this... sorry. Could you roll a D3, please, Caius? Mm -hmm. um. Just a second. Uh, can somebody else? I'm just having a. It's, it's frozen Two. for a second. Okay. Uh, your mind is filled with like a foggy haze, and your thoughts cannot connect uh, with your body, uh, nor speech. Uh, your agency is banished uh, from this, like, magic uh, stupor, presumably that this lurking thing uh, has glamoured you with. And so, like, while your mind screams, Tanaka, you stand yeah. there dumbly okay. head swimming. No, this, no. uh, Chex, what's your passive perception? Passive perception. Uh, 14. Uh, you see uh, Cutard like standing nearby the saddle of his horse as he goes to mount up, kind of just stuttering about in like an irregular like half circle. Uh, it seems strange to you, but the thought disappears when you hear like rocks moving behind you. And as you turn further <coughs> up the uh, this like unexplored uh, region, you see a thing like lumbering. Now that you've turned towards it and it eyes your your own, it lets out like a gravelly uh, and like bursts uh, bursts into like a jolted jog. Faster than its uh, than its appearance belies. Uh, you need to roll initiative. Uh, and similarly, uh, checks. Can I get an Arcana check from you? Uh, that will be a fourteen. Yeah, uh, same as before. You you do not reckon what the, or know what this thing is uh, as you like spy it for the first time. Only that it is monstrous. Um, shit. Yeah, he's he's gonna run towards his horse uh, and attempt to get on it. As soon as this thing um, breaks free of the foliage. Yep. Uh, well, that will be determined by initiative. Yeah, what did you get, Kais, for initiative? And Sarno? 18. And could you put it up in the um, in the YouTube chat? Uh, yes. Yeah. Cheers. Um, 
plus four initiative or at dexterity. Sorry, Knight. So will I go first? For sure. Yeah, you definitely go first. <laughs> Yeah, you can rush over, uh, Tanika, uh, to your horse uh, and begin to mount up uh, as this thing lets out uh, a wet roar and begins to lumber uh, down the slope towards you. Yeah, he would just use whatever any movement he's got to spur that horse on um, in Kadan's direction. Yeah, with your movement, uh, you can get to your horse and mount up, and then with an action, spur your mount uh, over to where Karan is. Uh, Karan, uh, you can see, yeah, through that hay, that foggy kaleidoscope uh, as your brother, like, mounts up on nine horses and rides towards you in nine different paths. <laughs> um, dazed and confused, unable to speak. Can I act or not? Uh, unfortunately, not. Not for two rounds. Yeah. So yes, I'm just, I'm just uh, making un sort of making urgent but unintelligible noises. Chalun, uh, since you're faster. Um... You're 120 feet from where you'd had your horses uh, to uh, graze nearby where you wrestled with Sarnai. When you hear like the panicked screaming of uh, Karan's horse uh, and then Tanaka's uh, joining it, forcing you to look over your uh, shoulder, it's an eerie view, uh, like rolling um, ridges that have just like swallowed up sight uh, of your brothers. But you hear it again, the, the panicked noise of, uh, of Karan's gelding. Okay, um, I'll just begin galloping in that direction. So I think I can move and then use the horse's action to dash to get 120. Um, but even when I get to, oh, sorry, you know, uh, like even when I get to 60, I guess I would like see a bit more of what's going on. I guess you know, um, and he would be very confused uh, and like horrified. I think um, I have to make a save. Oh, an Arcana check for free. Arcana, okay. Uh, so Arcana is just a straight 10. Yeah, you're not sure what this thing is. It is man-like, though eight feet uh, tall or more. Bald uh, and, like, uh, hairless. Uh, and, yeah, great ball like tusks uh, protruding from a jaw beneath overstretched lips. In some instance, actually, like, protruding from the flesh. Uh, naked and clothed only, thankfully, by some, like, uh, coarse uh, furs uh, girt about its loin parts and this glowing staff that that seems like out of place in the hands of this um, distended uh, eye-drooped uh, monstrosity. Terra seizes your horse, but you can like urge it forward. Uh, it's a trained mount, uh, if you wish, like down into the gulf uh, where it lumbers towards uh, chasing out with one arm outstretched towards Tanaka's horse uh, as he gallops up to Kadan. Um, I will fire my bow at the thing, uh, but remain on my horse. I'm 60 away now, I think, from it. So. Okay, sure. Uh, that's going to be a 19 to hit. Certainly hits. Ooh, uh, nine damage. Uh, the arrow thunks into it. Uh, it's raw shifts uh, slightly. Uh, and it turns uh, to look up at the ridge of the gulf uh, towards where you are, uh, and its eyes level uh, with like something like intelligence. Uh, yeah, that's. I just don't want it to kill Kadan. Uh, so I'll like fire that arrow, and then I'll like move. So I moved sixty. Oh, the horse can. Uh, I'll just stay where I am. I'll fire the arrow and stay where I am. Okay, uh, Sanai. Uh, 
I guess it worries you uh, as Chulun looks over his shoulder past you and then like gallops on, uh, hauling a bow as he goes and then standing up into the saddle to fight down to the gulf. <clears throat> and you too can hear the screaming of horses. You're 90 feet uh, from where uh, Tanaka was. So actually 60 feet uh, from Tanaka. And if you turn, even with the partial movement of uh, your mare, it will get you nearby to where Chulun uh, sits mounted. Uh, she'll uh, come in and come alongside uh, Tanaka if she can uh, and try and circle the the thing from behind as she looks at it. Uh, I think that might take the horse's full movement. Uh -huh. So you want to like, put yourself kind of equidistant from Chilun with the thing in between you two? Yes. Uh, yeah, you can do that with for all of your movement and action mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and horsemanship, horse ladyship. Yeah, it's the it's like the maneuver where you you make the ring around and you put your target in the oh. center. And she and Chulun has told them to practice it enough and chided them enough for not doing it that now it's second nature. And I did feel my Arcana roll. Okay, you're not sure what this thing is either. It looks about uh, as one rider uh, fires down from a top of ridge at it, and the other. <laughs> Out in a circle uh, to flank it, and like arms outstretched, like one holding the staff uh, towards one and hand towards the other, begins to like murmur uh, through its like gnarled toenail color, uh, colored colored uh, more. Uh, and I think the the threat is the mounted archer, as far as this thing believes. So unfortunately for you, Lloyd, I'm going to need a Constitution save DC 15 from yourself and from your horse. Oh boy. Okay, I succeed. 17 on the die. A uh, horse gets a 12 on the die. I don't know what a horse it probably doesn't have plus five to con, so. Okay. So this thing uh, points its staff uh, towards uh, Sarnai and then turns its head and reaches with an outstretched hand uh, towards you. It crouches low and picks uh, like a, a stone, uh, probably like half the size of a tennis ball up uh, and awkwardly stretches its arm back and it hurls it in your direction. Uh, and you like wonder at what it could possibly hope to do as this like rock sails up and thunks into the side uh, of your horse to no great effect, uh, but after a microsecond, explodes in this dazzling uh, ray and shrapnel uh, and lethality erupt uh, out of the stone, piercing in the side of your leg and gutting the horse uh, beneath you. It'll take 20 damage and you'll take 10 oh, uh, shit. damage. Uh, <clears throat> uh, shatter. Uh, yeah, obviously I'll like, leap from the horse uh, and like try and land. Uh, deck save, DC 13, please. Yeah, easily make it. Yeah, so you roll from your horse and spring up to a step and look over at the thing as it gives like a few wet winnicks before they're just slumping into a mess and look down at like the uh, searing shards that have pierced through the uh, deal at your thigh and knee. Uh, with its movement, uh, I think it will... The closest to it would still be Karan uh, and Tanaka. So it will rush uh, into their midst, uh, reaching for their horse's tails. Tanaka, it is your turn as this thing lumbers up to you and your brother. Yeah, I've seen uh, what just happened there. He's probably hauled on the reins um, and he will have turned to try and take a, a shot with his bow. Uh, but imagine the panic of the horses uh, is what's getting blamed for the miss. And then he's going to use his movement to uh, continue on towards Kadan. Yeah, you can easily do so. Your horse would still have half its movement left, uh, left after you get up alongside your brother. Well, he doesn't know anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a right. Um, so he's probably tried to do that thing where the the rider will grab someone from the ground. And he's probably tried to do that as he's went past and realised that obviously it hasn't happened. Uh, so 
he's spurning his mountain coming back. Yeah, so that would take your full action, uh, sorry, your full movement, I should say, essentially to get back to Karan and see that he's not even like able to like grasp at your hand as you try and haul him up. He's kind of almost like a dead weight uh, and seems confounded by this thing, which is obvious, obviously sorceress because you would have heard uh, and seen the aftermath of the spell it cast uh, at Chulun. So you still have your action left if you wanted to do anything else in your turn? Uh, no, no, he, he took a shot with his bow, so... And flopped it. That's right, of course. Um, cut on. Uh, there's, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do for now. Yeah, just blubbering. Urgently. But that's two turns, right? Yeah, that's his second turn. Yeah, so at the end of your turn, you'd like come to your senses and the kaleidoscope would narrow into one uh, to find focus uh, of the imminent peril that you stand in. Uh, Chulun, you're the next to act. Uh, agony searing up the side of your right leg. Your horse like a mess uh, nearby. And this thing uh, is like rushing towards where Karan fumbles around stuporously. Uh, I'll begin shouting uh, at Sarnai, the staff, the staff! Uh, having seen it like use it weirdly and like casting spells, I know that only like warlocks and uh, demons use staffs for spells. Um and so I'll like point at it, and like I will then try and shoot uh, the hand uh, that's holding the staff. Uh, I'm actually I'm only like twenty feet slower on uh, foot than on horse, which is just baffling. Never played a monk before, and I just feel like I'm superhuman. <laughs> I imagine you like the camera's looking up, and you like, run and jump off the side of a slope, and then roll down. They're like roll yeah. down, real quick, covering distance with surprising speed. For sure. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's a uh, 14 on the die plus 6, 20 again. And this is to shoot at the thing? Yeah, yep. Yeah, it hits. The arrow strikes in. Uh, okay. Uh, it's going to be uh, 8 damage. And I'm just going to like, you call out, like, sorry, you go. I was going to say, it roars in pain and swats at the arrow, like snapping it, uh, but it hasn't filled the thing. Yeah, I'll just like roar at the others uh, to like focus on that arm where the, the staff is so it can drop it or like pull it out of its hand or something. Uh, yeah, and then I'll run a little bit further and that'll be the end. And further, do you mean like towards it uh, or away? Uh, I, kinda, I want to stay at the same distance, which is 60. Or <laughs> moving like left and right or whatever, you know, uh, okay. so that I'm not staying still. Cool. Uh, Sana, you're next. And Sana has heard Chulun and uh, she is going to, to ride past the thing, uh, uh, probably between it, uh, Kadan, and Tanaka, and try and uh, strike at the staff and see if she can either shatter, like break it or knock it out of its hand. Yeah, you can ride up uh, and try and disarm it. Uh, unbeknownst to you, uh, it is of arcane origin, uh, so you cannot like, break it, but certainly mechanically attempt to di uh, disarm uh, him of it or it of it. Yeah, I'd, I'm picturing like if it if it was mundane, the the blade would kind of slice through it, but if it's not, it might get stuck and kind of push it out of its hand. Right. Yeah, uh, so you'll roll with a disadvantage. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, it gets uh, a 20 all up. I do not. So you hack down uh, at the thing, uh, and your blade like rings off it, uh, like an eerie uh, tone is produced after the initial scraping noise, uh, and despite like the heft of the swing, uh, this monstrosity still holds, uh, holds the glowing staff. Yeah, she'll use just kind of the rest of the horse's movement to continue and um, get to the other side of the thing and turn back to face it. Can your horse uh, make an opposed athletics, please? Ooh, it can try. <laughs> oh, DC 23. There's no way. Nope. It reaches up with its claws underneath the belly of your horse and then just like bum rushes forward, toppling it, screaming uh, over backwards, and you're thrown down. Can you make a deck save, DC 13? 
can can you deflect attacks from your horse onto you or something like that? I mean, I don't know if that makes any difference. If mountain combatant, you can. Uh, yeah, and I actually I do have that feat. Um, so if I could, is that a was that an attack then? Uh, uh, technically, I... it's an attack, but it's a push. She's like lifting the horse up and and throwing it and you down to prone you both. Yeah, I don't think there's way I could. Uh, yeah. Um. So yeah, I'll make my. You said uh, acrobatics. That's right. Uh. No. No. Sorry. It's a deck save DC thirteen. Oh, deck save. Uh. Ooh, I made made it. Thirteen total. Okay, so your horse takes nine bludgeoning, uh, and you'll take four, uh, as it kind of like half picks up the front of the horse and like slams it down uh, into the ground, screaming and kicking and flailing. Uh, it won't use uh, any movement uh, other than that, and like stay in that spot. And for its bonus action, uh, begin moving its gnarled hands in concert uh, with the waving of the uh, glowing rod. Uh, and it begins to glimmer uh, with an unholy sheen uh, about its forearms. Uh, to what effect, you're not sure yet. But that's it for Mangus. Uh, Tanaka, you're the next to act. Uh, yeah, you will uh, check on Kadan, um, who I imagine is kind of moving at this point, um, coming back to these senses. Uh, so Yes, I'm, I'm guessing he, look, he looks a little bit more alert, but I'm not sure whether it's visible yet. He'll probably shout something at you, uh, kind of the, to the effect of get with it. Um, look after Sarai, or something. Yeah. Yeah, you just hear him shout out Sarai when she goes down. And then... Tanaka's going to ride his horse and basically do what Jolun did, um, kind of parallel, uh, and take a shot at this thing, uh, which is only going to be a 14. <clears throat> 14 is the magic number. The arrow flies and they find its mark uh, in the middle section of this hulk. So, if we roll the attack, then we roll the damage. Nine points of damage. Yeah, it seems unhindered despite how many shafts it's sprouting. Uh, cut on, you can finally act. Cut the on. glamour is like lifted from you. Yep, and this um, he focuses in and sees sees Sarnay thrown down, and as the thing sort of turns to Sarnay and the horse, he he runs, he sort of circles around the thing, sort of running around its back, um, um, kicks himself off its thigh and catches hold of its waist and tries to get a, tries to get a grab on its, on the arm that was holding the staff. Um, just the shoulder, basically, but he's just trying to get a grab. He's grappling. Okay, uh, make your roll. Uh, your DC will be 17. And I get, I get a 23. So I'm, I've just grabbed hold of him. And I'm, I don't think I'll be able to stop him moving around or anything like that, but I'll just be on him and holding on. Okay, Chalun, uh, you see this. What do you do? Uh, okay, I'm going to uh, run towards the thing. I think I'm 60 away. Um, so I could. Yep. Yeah. So I'll move. I'll move forty, which is my speed, and then I'll. Uh. uh I have the bonus action to dash. Yeah. So I'll just move forty and shoot uh, the bow. <coughs> uh, once again at the arm. Uh, 14 on the die plus 20 yep, again. Spooky. Uh, for 10 damage. Uh, the arrow goes in up to the fletching uh, in the back of the thing. Uh, but yeah, as before, it doesn't seem any diminished uh, despite how many times it's been struck. Still gives that wet uh, wailing uh, roar 
maybe pain, maybe something else. But it's bleeding. There's that much at least. Um, I think that's all. I'm just maybe I'll dodge. Does dodge help you against spells? Um, against dex saves. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Then I'll uh, spend a key point to dodge as a bonus action. And then that'll be all. Um, I'm very sorry, cut on <laughs> what's about to happen. Uh, will you like uh, hold on I to this? Turn first? Or is oh, this a okay. No, no, you do get your turn. <laughs> <My pick. laughs> um, uh, so Sarnai, uh, will kind of getting, getting to her feet from the, the dust and the, the flailing horse, She'll uh, let out the wolf howl um, and close the, I imagine at this point, less than 15 foot gap between her and this thing. Uh, and she's going to uh, aim for the, the wrist on it um, uh, where it's holding the staff. Uh, it's a 22 to hit and 11 hits. damage. Uh, 11 Yeah, you feel like the blade like ring on bone and like saw down before pulling it out and blood spurts from the wound. The thing gives a feral yowl that does not drop its uh, grasp on the uh, the white hot uh, rod. So she's going to stay there and she sees Kadan clinging to its arm um, and she'll stay there with her brother. And shoulder. So it's going to the arm that you've uh, hold this, hold on to this thing by uh, cut on. It like lifts you up uh, off your feet uh, um, and twist. Okay, uh, I mean, I wasn't imagining myself actually on the arm, but on the sort of shoulder. But go on. Okay, uh, that's fair enough. Uh, actually, if you're on its back, uh, you would have had the movement uh, to do so. Uh, in that case, it's going to like go to the immediate foe. Uh, and Sano, it will outstretch uh, the staff uh, towards you. Uh, and like it looks like molten fire, but like in a watery way, drips down uh, from the tip of it to splash down hotly, like searing uh, the dirt into like spatters of glass uh, about it. This horrifying yeah. sound, and a second later, fire uh, erupts from the end of the staff down to where it's pulled, uh, and then like a great wall bursting forth uh, through you uh, and beyond you, uh, including your horse. You'll have to make a deck save, uh, as will your horse. So mine is going to be an 18. I don't have any faith that the horse is going to make this. The horse gets a three. You'll take 10 fire damage and the horse will take 20. Uh, there's a the scream and the smell of burning hair and burning flesh. Tanaka, you can hear like a horse scream cut short by an inferno and arrows fly and roars and cries of pain mingle. Yeah, he's going to add to the, the flag of arrows as he continues to, to draw uh, and let loose at this thing, although unsuccessfully, because uh, that's only a nine for this round. Yeah, as it wrestles and struggles to try and reach over its shoulder, it cut on, it twists at an untimely angle and your arrow just flies wide off into the, the turf beyond. Cut on your hat's blown off and like your hair's flying in like the wind uh, as it's like sucked in unnaturally to the tip of this staff and just blasting forward uh, horse scream cut <laughs> short your sister just like wreathed uh, around her deal and helmet uh, with fire like licking at her skin. Um, Sarnai! He, he screams stabbing down at the tendons on the arm um, with his antler hilted dagger 
but a sudden twist. I don't know, AC 14? 14 is the magic number. Okay, so he does 12 points of damage as he sort of, it doesn't go in as far as he wanted it to, but it, it does some damage as he's holding on. Well, and Kais, you do have advantage because I'm within five feet and you're doing melee. Yep. Yes, I, uh, yes, but, uh, but I still, I have advantage. That's with advantage. Yep. Okay. The thing howls in pain is uh, bloodied now. And since you guys have just been tugging the arm every time, I'm going to say that it, the staff like drops into like the pool of fire uh, from its grasp uh, as it clutches at the ruin you guys have wrought there. And it's children's turn. I'll retreat if you do. I'll shout to um, I'll shout to Sade. <laughs> Uh, he is going to drop the bow and uh, rush forward um, pull the scimitar that he has and I'm going to unleash a bunch of attacks. Uh, is there a way that I can approach this thing and get advantage? What's my king? Um, you have advantage from me because I have wolf. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then I will I'll make two attacks and then I'll use flurry of blows to make two more. So Here we go. The first is a 19. Okay. Second is a 17. Third is a crit. Fourth is a 13 plus 4 is 17. So the lowest is a 17. Uh, yeah, so four. Jesus, this is going to be a lot. Okay, so 9, 8, Eight and five. Thirty. Holy shit. Yeah, uh, nine, eight, eight, and five is what I got. Uh, I wanted another crit also. <laughs> oh, good lord. Uh, okay, this will be on the. Mm, minoring, lingering. So 20, a d20, please, lord. <coughs> a3. Oh, it's so fitting too. Uh, the third strike hacks down at the ruin uh, on his right forearm or limb, uh, and you hear a crack as the bone uh, is severed. Uh, the hand is not removed, but it hangs limply at a horrible angle from the arm while blood uh, spatters out. It cannot use that hand for... Oh, I'm not even going to bother rolling. Weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's one or seven weeks. Uh, DC 15. Oh, and it needs to make a con save for this, uh, which it fails. So the hand actually is lost. Uh, it's just like blood spurting from its uh, ruined stump. Uh, oh. the <laughs> yeah, so I'll just uh, like appear uh, and unleash that uh, that I was holding on to. Um, uh, and then uh, I will stand and look uh like it seems to me that everyone's like not dead which is pretty pretty good news but he would look very worried at like starting to being on fire and like uh, kadan's injuries and stuff but he will uh just stay where he is son i make a deck save at the start of your turn i can do that uh yeah 20 not natural Take eight fire damage, and it's your turn. Uh, so, Sarnai, um, I, I think part of that fire damage is as she reaches down to to pick up the the weapon that she sure surely dropped as she flung her hands up to protect her face, uh, and it, it kind of sears her palm a little bit. But uh, she hears Chulin's how and uh, will step forward and and try and gut this thing. Um, nice. My bad. Actually, uh, I realized I had to roll a concentration save, which I did, uh, and failed uh, the second roll. Uh, so that uh, like the prism of fire you're in actually ceased before the start of your turn. Mm -hmm. okay. So that last eight damage you don't take. My bad. Well, that's convenient. Um, but it'll be a, oh. a 15 on the die to hit this creature. That um, certainly hits. And she's trying to get through this thick matted fur. Um, 
eight damage. He stabbed down with the blade and it disappears <laughs> into the thing and you pull it out. Putrid blood irks forth, uh, but it does not fall. Just rolls a little more horrifyingly. Uh, and at this stage, I think it's going to be a random strike out of one of the three that are adjacent to it. So one or two for you, Caius, a three or four for you, Taylor, five or six for you, my lord. Sarnai, uh, with its one good remaining hand that it cast a venomous spell on uh, a previous round on, it will slash down at you, uh, trying to claw in uh, and venomate. So I first need to hit, which will for 23 to hit. Uh, you'll take seven uh, piercing damage. You need to make a DC 14 con save, please. A con. Oh, that's a natural one. You take 10 poison damage uh, on top of that. Ooh. Oh, no, looking so hot. Uh, and that's all it can do, really. It's not going to move. Oh, maybe it would move. No, I don't think. I think it would. it's well and truly in fight rather than flight mode. Uh, Tanika, you're the next to act. He will uh, release horse around again so he can get a better aim in the saddle and uh, once again pluck that bowstring, let an arrow fly. Uh, this time it's a 19 to hit. Uh, and it's Oof. 15 damage. Oof. Uh, that's... Uh, it sways on its feet, great gouts of blood like spilling out from the maimed stump and streams of life force trickling down to mingle with one another from the many arrows uh, that like dot uh, the grotesque body of this thing. Uh, it surely must fall soon, but it does not, despite your further onslaught. Uh, and pulling another arrow uh, to load onto the string, you see Kadan burst into action. What do you do, guys? Kadan, um, protecting his injured rib. So far, he's managed to fight, and he he's, he manages again. He's he's takes out the dagger from his shoulder, and a sudden movement sort of changes his position, and he stabs it towards um, the gut, the thing's ear, hitting an AC of twenty-one for eighteen points of damage. Uh, that will go through the ear hole and into the brain, and you can describe the demise of this thing. Yeah, it suddenly, um, um, suddenly, it sort of jerks and loses sort of control of its body, and and um, starts stumbling around, um, f forgetting the things around it. it. Even though it's hit its brain, it hasn't sort of killed it immediately, but it's it's lost awareness of its surrounds, and gr it sort of stumbles around and gradually. Uh, eventually stops moving and, and drops with a with a crunch, um, throwing me off it and and um, landing on the dead horse. And Kadan tries to roll up out of it, but um, but the, his broken ribs. Cause him the winds. Uh, the wolf pack. Uh, Nico, is this poison a long running thing or was it just for the like a one round thing? No, it was just for the next strike that hits, uh, forces a con save to take poison damage as well. So it's just a <laughs> one-off sum of damage. Good. And the fire, of course, is out. There'll be the smell of roasted horse, uh, death, uh, and like the body of this slaughtered thing. Let us, let us roll it over and see what what is it. I don't know. We should be careful. It's not natural. 
it is indeed not rolling over and like uh, examining the thing for a time uh, and without having it like lumbering down, trying to kill you. Easier to recall uh, memories of Zishi speaking of such such things earlier in your youth, of monsters and demons and devils, uh, and of uh, mangos, which this thing uh, very well could be, uh, given its peculiar maw uh, and its use uh, of sorcery uh, or some like witchcraft. I uh, had mastery over some of those elemental uh, arcane powers. Uh, that troglodytes such as this uh, should not wield. Perhaps it was drawn to the sound of your like quarrel or mirth uh, or with the scent of horses. Who can know? Uh, but such things are often told uh, to dwell in lairs for want of a better word and hoard things both sorcerous uh, and profane uh, in origin. Sarnai is is not uh, looking at this thing. She's, uh, I think, clutching at the the burned forearms that she has, uh, um, fighting back tears, and uh, uh, trying to ignore the the strange burning sensation from uh, the weapon when it hit her. Uh -huh. We should burn it. The staff is burnt already, as it was in the fire. The staff is unharmed by flame. Uh, it's clear to see because that fire has gone out when it when the thing's hand was cut off. It is untarnished uh, by flame. That would be dirty and like maybe gore spattered, but not like damaged in any way that you can see, which reeks of sorcery in of itself. We should cut off his arm as a trophy. And... Hmm. I would be wary of taking any part of that flesh back to our camp. Maybe a tusk. You, we, you broke its arm. It's... I think, I think an arm would be a fitting trophy to celebrate Tanaka. I think the staff will be enough. Oh, he looks a bit crestfallen. Yeah, well, what happened is this, it should be, should be dealt with from bottom. That being the case, you can easily range about and find like firewood uh, and such uh, to heap over this thing uh, and burn it. Take its tusks. Take its tusks. He cuts off its tusks. You have a mangoose tusk. It'll adorn his necklace. Um, for the staff, we'll have to wrap it up uh, in something uh, like leathers or like furs or something. Uh, he doesn't want anyone touching it because it like he's looking at this thing and he thinks like the staff was the evil as opposed to like the monster. I don't know if Tanaka quite feels the same way, but uh, very similar thought process. I don't think that stuff will get picked up. It will just get wrapped in whatever high blankets we have. Next time that little fucker comes by, we can sell him this cursed staff. I'm sure he'd love it. So leaving the body uh, of the mangoes behind to burn, you can double mount uh, back stuff carefully wrapped and stowed as you head back to your camp uh, in the Marmot Hollows. Should the we... lone wolf uh, top the ridge beyond watches in your direction long uh, after you disappear into the horizon. What were you going to say, Kaius? Should we bury the stuff somewhere? Or 
hide it on at the top of a tree or something like that. So I maybe we shouldn't take it back to the camp. I think I feel safer knowing where it is than where it isn't. I agree. If we leave it here, anyone, even that little dwarf or someone terrible could find it. Yeah, you guys don't know who dwells in this region because I, I remember Taylor saying specifically that it rode off further than whereas she had scouted previous. So, yeah, you couldn't be sure as to who might come across it here. Tanaka, will you speak of it to the others? What will we tell them? We tell them we come back with a, a new tale, a new story, how we encountered a beast and we bravely fought it off. But there's no mention of this in the story of a staff. Agreed. It is simply a beast that can make fire, I suppose. And she kind of gestures to the charred deal and hair and skin. So you guys can head back. To, oh, sorry, you go. No, you go, sorry. No, you go. I was just going to say that there are such beasts in the Clyde, but... And so swiftly, I imagine you guys would head back uh, towards camp to, to have your wounds and Sano's burns uh, tended to uh, as best you can there uh, in the relative safely safety of the Marmot Hills. Uh, and I think that's where a nice place to leave this session. So thanks for playing, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for running.